Welcome to Let's Talk Jets Radio. Mr. Primetime. Impromptu Thursday shows are never good. Nope. Never a good thing. Never. Nope. When you see us here at 8 o'clock on a Thursday talking Jets, it better be a game. Because if it's not a game, we got some stuff to go on right here. We're just not allowed to have nice things. I've accepted that. You know, it's weird. Because I had a feeling something like this was going to happen, but I just wasn't sure what player it was going to be. <laughs> but it's just, it's just strange, man. It's strange. So for those of you who don't know, which I'm sure everybody at this point knows – Thank you for joining us, first of all, is that Elijah Moore has requested a trade. Now, this this is probably because, you know, Rich Samini is the king of instigation, right? Let's not blame Rich Samini. No, for no, this. I'm just gonna say, but this let's I, go with the timeline of where this is. I've seen no, because I've seen that. Like the, the initial tweet that he put out in the morning is responsible for Elijah Moore going off the no, deep end. No, like, it's no, not, it's, no, it, no, no. Yeah, exactly. No. This I've has been festering times, for a couple though. weeks. Let's be honest. Clearly, it's been for a couple clearly. weeks it's been going on. So after the game, Samini mentions that Elijah Moore got no, has no targets. And what, the minute Elijah Moore responded saying, you know, I'm a team yep. guy, but, but yep. here's the thing. You knew right there there is a problem brewing. And when a player goes to social media, it means it's already past that point of I talked to the coaches, nothing yeah. changed. I wanted something else, nothing changed. Here we are. And now I feel confident. You know what? I got to say something more. I want to get my point out that I'm unhappy. Yep. When you get to that point, not like, I can't think about it. When you get to that point, you've been advised by somebody. You know what? Time to step it up, kid. You know, if you want, if you're this unhappy, the agent, whoever it is, says, you know what? Express your feelings a little bit. Put it out there because you think about it. Elijah Moore is a very smart kid, dude. Mm -hmm. Very smart, very humble, all this stuff. For him to go on social media and do that, which was out of character, was like, you know what? And and to do it during a three-game winning streak, too. I, I think Bingo. that spoke volumes. Like, he's not the type of player, at least that, that we've seen, you know, yeah. or at least we even heard about as far as his draft reports, scouting reports, and all that. He's always been deemed a, a team-first player. So for him to do that after a three-game winning streak, it, it absolutely raised eyebrows. Yeah, so – and then I was thinking back of, like, the, how the whole season's playing out. So you look at, you know, Elijah Moore was king of the castle coming into the season, right? Last year he mm -hmm. was the fan favorite. Elijah Moore's our guy. Everybody's saying rookie of the year, breakout star, all this stuff, right? He comes into this season, and boom, they bring in Garrett Wilson, yep. right? Now, all of a sudden, wait a minute. You know, we're like, ah, oh, trade Corey Davis. But everybody, Elijah Moore's our guy. They get Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson has a breakout where everybody, even even training camp, everybody loved him. Yep. Where he was getting all that fanfare, all that hype, everything else. And Elijah's probably like, wait a minute. What happened to me? Like, where am I going? And then, uh, then Garrett Wilson has these big games. You know, rookie of the week, all this stuff. You, you try to look at it as, all right, you have the built-in excuse of backup quarterbacks in there. You need Zach Wilson to get a few yep. games under his belt, get the offense in sync. But also the fact that what's working right now is Brees Hall in the running game. So yep. like you, you think eventually teams are going to start adjusting to that, and that should open up things for Elijah Moore. But for him to escalate it from a, a, a day off on a personal day to yep. coming back requesting a trade out, that's – it, it well, says I mean, there's a lot the, more going the Jets on. Always, the Jets always mishandle that. They use the media yeah. to push their narrative and push the little messages. And we, I knew – I mean, it's just – there's more to the story. So you look at it now. So now Elijah Moore is the point where he wants to be traded. And the thing is this. It's like the one thing I think the Jets could be at fault is I, we've been saying it for three, four weeks now. It's like they're not using them correctly. Can they find ways to better use them in the offense? And we both say yes, right? Yes, but they're also 3-0 and in those games. Fair, but if, if the whole thing that Mike LaFleur always told us was we want to maximize the skill sets of our players. If you look yeah. at how Elijah Moore is being currently using the offense throughout this entire year while he's healthy, they probably I, 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 I think it's more of a red flag that you now have two wide receivers that at least on, on film look like they have some talent that we can't even find a way to now get on the field or get targets, and both of them want to trade out. To me, that's a, a, a larger problem. It's so while, while, every, while everyone's burying Elijah Moore right now, I'm looking at you know coaching staff, GM, like how are they handling the situation? What went on behind the scenes that caused this to escalate as quickly as it did? Exactly thing. That that's it's just this seems like, and I get it, man. Like I'm not happy about this at all because like, dude, I'm no. like Jets won three in a row. I'm sitting worried about a trap game that arguing people about that, and now this shit comes no. out. I'm like, you kidding me? I'm like, of all things to happen, no. like this, like a young promising star is yeah. is wants out. 
And and the, the worst thing is like there's not there's no value, dude. You're not because now teams know not who right wants now, out. No. I mean, yeah. there's teams like the Packers that can use him, but then Joe Douglas has to hold firm and say, you know what, dude, if we don't get the he, exact value you want, sit here. And he's right? shown in the past he'll he'll wait it out. I mean, look what he's doing with Mims right now. Mims requested a trade back in August. He's been inactive, and they still haven't found a deal for him. So he's he's not just going to cave into a player's demands if if the value isn't there. And more more still has two years under contract as a yep. second round pick, making very little money after yep. this year. He's got so tremendous the, value, the, dude. The, there is no rush to trade him at all. So like yeah. my, my initial reaction is like everybody else, like I want to bury Elijah Moore for doing this during a three game yep. winning streak, but I also want to hear like what are the other details? What what else is going on behind the scenes that caused this to fucking blow up so quickly? Because it's got to be something. Because like my whole like when this first came out, my initial reaction was like, dude. It's the running game. They only they had a hundred yards passing. Your time is going to come because Bingo, yeah. opposing defenses are going to stop the run and force Zach Wilson to pass. Then you see where the ball goes. But you know, even in clutch time, Zach's going to Corey Davis. Zach's forcing balls to Garrett Wilson. Elijah Moore is just not a part of the mix. And then we're like, yeah. to be honest with you, I wasn't really more. I, we want to see Elijah Moore get more involved. I was like, get the tight ends more involved. I want to yep. see more Zuma. I want to see more Conklin. Like, like. And, and in fairness, too, I mean, there have been a couple 50-50 balls that he hasn't come down with. There yep. have been a couple plays where he's not the primary target, where you can question his effort on some of those routes. So he's not exactly doing everything to earn those extra targets. I mean, I, I agree that he's a talented player who, yep. if, if you want your offense to function, he should be featured to some degree. Yep. But he's also got to earn that. So, Especially, I mean, what, what, what has he accomplished to this point in his career where he could just go off demanding a trade? So, like, I'm, I'm trying to balance, like, both sides of it. I'm, I'm pissed at everybody right now. Yeah, we're, I'm so we're, we have a three game dude. winning streak and we're dealing with this bullshit. But especially when it's like, to me, it's like you thought he was one of the guys where it's like football was important to him. The team was important to him. Like he's all about the team, all about winning, like give everything we can for winning and you are winning and then you're not happy. Yep. Like, how, like what? Like now? And it's just, and this was the one thing I worried about, not worried about, but you wonder with a, a fairly new head coach dealing with all these young personalities, dude. Like, they have a lot of talent now. Now you have to manage the personalities and the egos. You know, it's – I tell you, winning is a deodorant, dude. It's a deodorant. When you win and you have 100 yards passing, nobody cares. You lose and you have 100 yards passing for a couple weeks in a row, guess what's going to happen? People are going to start complaining. Yeah, yeah, but now, NFL. but now winning's not even the deodorant. I mean, if you aren't getting your your key players' targets, they're they're still not going to be happy because ultimately they want to get paid after their rookie contract is done. So if Moore's not getting those opportunities – He's not going to be happy. And that's and that's where I just think there's something more to this because and mm-hmm. now listen, I'm pissed at Elijah Moore. I hate this came out. I hated the tweet when it was on, you know, when you responded to Smini's tweet, but it's like, dude, to come out when they're winning and have a trade quest, it's gotta be something like, you know what? I had a discussion with Mike LaFleur and Sala, and we're just not we're not on the same page. We're not getting along or something. There had to be something that pushed them over the edge. But you know what? I don't want to be here. Like you guys don't want to talk to me, or we can't figure this out, or you're disrespectful, or whatever it is. I want to but again, now this is two receivers that they refuse to adjust their offense to fit a certain type of skill set. For for all of you know Denzel yeah. Mims' faults with the penalties and some of the drops, he's still a big target who's able to you know move after the catch. You could use him in the red zone. He can go up and get it. He's making some ac- acrobatic yeah. catches in preseason. You would think they could find a way to get him on the field, but they haven't. So he's requesting a trade, and now Elijah Moore too. Like to me, that's a problem within the organization. I, and I, I don't know and if it's I, and I see the players. I understand. We'll bring callers on. We can bring some callers on tonight. I don't care. But the thing is, I understand the whole AJ Brown thing. It's six games into the season. Like they like Zach's been back three games. They're winning. Like, you know what? If you're in like Man. week 12, week 14, and you have like 30 catches on the year, and you're like, dude, I'm two years into the system. I'm not getting any numbers. I'm not getting my yards. I'm not getting my opportunities. Dude, it's so early in the season to have this reaction it's, right now. It's not even a full two years. Crazy man, I, and, I don't... And, he, and he missed a few games last year. Yep, he, he's played all of what I mean, 16, 17 games so far. Yeah, I man. don't, but I mean, I just I'm telling you, there's more to the story. There has to be, there, yeah, there, it's just absolutely, there, there it's to. it's too early for him to have this kind of reaction unless something went over the edge where he's like, you know what, this is. I don't think, and the thing is, he's not been a diva like Elijah right. Moore has been like a, a family guy, like very respectful, very nice, did all the right things, said all the right you, things. You wouldn't know it seeing some of the, the comments on Jets Twitter. Fans have freaking buried him already. I mean, that's because they're pissed off because we're winning and he wants to trade, but it just seems like there has to be something. I, I, I understand being pissed at him, but like like we keep saying, though, I mean, wait for all the details to come out before you completely bury the player, knowing that this has happened several times before in the Jets history with a lot of players. And, and the, the thing and usually is that, more details do come out eventually. And we'll bring, we'll bring calls on a couple seconds, but the other thing too, is that it's similar with, with Mims and Elijah Moore's think about when Mims was drafted, the fans loved him. 
Mm-hmm. I can't, but Mims is going to be great. He's going to be a star. Yeah. He has his rookie year, showed some good, showed some bad, whatever. In the offseason, what do they do? They go out and get Elijah Moore or Corey Davis. <laughs> so Mims went from being king of the castle to be like, yeah. yo, bro, what happened to like what happened to me featuring me? I'm the guy. Elijah Moore thought he's gonna be the guy, comes back. Now Garrett Wilson's here. I, I think I said it at some point in August that having all these targets, you know, could be a, a potential problem if you don't find a way to actually spread the ball around and keep them all happy. Guys, yeah, guys want to get, get their I, opportunities. That's that's like, the NFL today. I, I don't think I never thought Elijah Moore was a me guy. I think something had to break down behind the scenes more than something had to like yeah. right. It just doesn't make sense. Something they, had to set it off, yeah. Something set this off to the point where there's, there's a point you of no you don't, you don't You don't go from having conversations with LaFleur and Salah during the week about potential usage to getting sent home on a personal day and saying, all right, I want out. Like, I'm done. Like, that doesn't just happen in 24 hours. I mean. Completely agree. And it just – this just sucks because now it's yeah. like the Jets were a likable team, the positive story. We're all fired up. We're like, you know what? Beat the Broncos. Go after the Patriots. Be 6-2. and two, Talking playoffs. And now you have this negative drama. And the worst thing a part of it is – now these member of the me that love nothing more than fucking negativity can harp on this shit for three days. Yep. And I, like, I thought we were past all this shit. Yep. I'm curious as far as like what Elijah Moore's standing in the locker room is, whether or not, you know, you yeah. have 53 guys that are all backing him up or whatever the potential issue is that, you know, he's well, clearly having like, with the team. So. Well, now, like, now like you walk in a locker and everybody's like, bro, you, you want out of here? We're winning. Like it's all for one, one yep. for all. And you're obviously for yourself now. So what, like, do you want him on the field on Sunday? Do you want him to play? Like, what do you do with him now? But is it that, or are they seeing his point of view that, yo, like this is a talented kid that this offense, for whatever reason, is just not using or whatever but, I mean, his potential gripe is? I mean, that, that's what I'm like, I'm asking. Like, do, do they side with him or do they see why he's pissed off and why he wants out? Or and do that they create a or, potential problem? And if they do side with him, maybe they know what's going on behind the scenes and that they say, you know what? We got, we got our boy that we got our, we got our guy. That's, that's what I'm wondering. That's what I want to see. That's like, you know, obviously the Jets, you know, they're not stupid, dude. They, they play the media spin. They've done it with so many different things, and they've been far from perfect when it comes to handling players, including Joe Douglas. I mean, when he first came here, he had all those things that happened, lawsuits and injury shit and everything else. So I don't trust anything the Jets tell me. Well, they I was going to say, I, I think we'll the message today, right? So I don't trust <laughs> them. I was going to say, even Zach said today, you know, we, we love Elijah. I'm not intentionally trying not to look his way, which I, I thought was kind of a weird comment. But yeah, I mean. So it I'm curious. Like, it seems to like see, the players are going to have his back, but or or did the Jets tell them either no comment or just say we love him? Like you know, do they kind of control what the players yeah. say too? Like they they say they don't do that, but they do have a PR staff that plays that game as well. Oh, so yeah. oh yeah, we'll uh we'll bring some callers on, do a little prompt show, and we got to. I'll apologize to Jose. I'll do it myself because prime time was He's supposed gonna to be kill on, me. I was prime time was supposed to be on Jose's show tonight, and uh, I'm like, yo, bro, we got a stream. So took me hostage. I took blame for that. And another thing too, before you guys we go into this. Tomorrow morning, we are dropping new merch. We are dropping. We're doing T-shirts, long sleeve shirts, and sweatshirts. And uh, it's for a good cause, too. We're going back to the toy drive. So tomorrow morning, we're releasing all our new stuff. Five dollars of everything we sell will be going to the toy drive. So tomorrow morning, you'll see all our new gear. And here is the link to bring it on. So We got a lot of stuff going on here, man. We got the Sports Equinox on tonight, too. You got baseball, hockey, basketball, no, football. You got everything. This, this is how you know this shit's important. When I'm missing the Yankee game for this shit, so you don't have it on. I, I mean, I have. I, I'm just. I'm trying. To Not watch. missing much right now. Was it still zero zero? Right. Yeah. Ask so I just shared the link. First. If you guys want to come on and talk about it, still come on talk about it. Let's talk Hi, about. Elmo. I'm guessing that. Uh, what's up, Elmo? I always appreciate you in my video comments. You guys want to talk about what's going on with Elijah Moore? Um, <laughs> I, I'm just, just going to sit back and let people rant tonight. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not surprised. I mean, dude. If My anger just, is directed and, at everybody. Like, I'm just angry this got to this point. Like, I'm yeah. just pissed off because it's a young player that's on a rise that should be a valuable asset for this team. And now we're, we're dealing with this bullshit. And now it's like, if he's, I mean, obviously he's going to be on the team on Sunday. What is, is he going to be a distraction? Is he going to be active on Sunday? That's my question. I don't think is he's he, going to be active. I don't think he is either. So cool. now you have, a, you have a player with that ability inactive. Then I'm guessing, I guess Mims gets moved up, right? I would guess. I mean, probably. Or does Jeff Calvin, Smith see more action? Calvin, isn't Calvin Jackson still on the practice squad? He's gone, dude. Is he? I think so. I thought he was on the practice squad. Yeah, I think he's gone. So, he? yeah, it's crazy. So, we're going to bring on Dan. What's up, man? What's up, brothers? What's up, How ben? you doing, man? What's up, fellas? What's going on? How you taking this news today? Yo, you got... You got to trade him. You got to trade him. Enough is enough. Trade the dude. Honestly, what? How many games well, in? What though? And he what's wants his, it. What's it? What's he his wants value to right trade now, him. Though? I don't. What's his value right now. I don't need to hear the whole story. 
I don't need to hear the whole story. He's gone. Trade what's, him to Green Bay. But what's his value right now? Why, I don't why do you care. Trade him right now, instead of I, waiting I don't until want... he actually has significant value. I mean, if you think he's a legitimate player, which we've all said he is for a year and a half, why not actually wait until he gets back on the field until they actually start using him a little bit more, and then you can get a, a second or a first round pick back. Right now, you're not getting that. N nah. Mm -mm. Uh, no, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get a desperate team like the Green Bay Packers, who are desperate for a team for a wide receiver. You'll get yourself a first round pick. You'll get it. You will you get it. You you're gonna have desperate team. right now. Yes, oh, yes. I don't think so. You'll get it. Get that dude off this freaking team. Are you kidding me? You got a freaking. How do you know? How do you know it's him? Though? Just to play four and two. I mean, how how do you know that this is him though? Because he went outside. He started, he went on Twitter. He wants to trade. It's him. I want damage him out. The damage is done. Bye. Enough is enough. Are you kidding me? The culture is changing and this douchebag is staying the way status quo? Out. I don't need to hear a legitimate reason why this broke down. No, asshole. It's because Barrios is getting his, his touches. We're winning games. It's a team effort. This guy's cut off the same cloth as A.J. Brown, D.K. Madcap, all these guys that I wanted. Thank goodness we didn't get them because they all chirp. They all want their their money, their stardom. And this guy. But this is only – But this is, I agree. It's only a second year, but this is wild to me. Like I, I'm like, dude, like it's, your sec, it's your second year. Your, your quarterback just came back, and you're winning. Like This is the absolute worst time for a supposed you know, team first player. But what is what is the least you would take? What is the minimum compensation you'd want for him? Second round pick? A second round pick. But I know that we'll get a first. Knowing Joe Douglas. Guys, let's not forget who our GM is. Look what he got for Blake Cashman. Look what he got. He's not going to settle. Joe will not settle. He'll make him suffer. Now, that, that's the point. Moore, I don't think he's going to settle, and I don't think he's going to get what he wants right now. It's going to take a little bit. This is going to drag out, I think. He'll ruin his career. He'll ruin his career. He'll sit him down. You want you want to be a bitch? I'll treat you like a bitch. Just like that. Like, this is out of left field, fellas. We're on freaking cloud nine enjoying a four and two record. We haven't seen this. And all of a sudden, this asshole out of nowhere. No, I don't need to. Forget it. Second rounder? Bye. I'll, I'll take it. But honestly, guys, this is wow. – it's not a good look for this guy. And another thing – Teams are going to be afraid of him because let's say he produces and he's going to want his money. Yep. Let's say That's if he's playing for the Packers or, or the Cardinals, whatever the case is, this guy's a headache. What? 18 games in and not even 18 games. How many games? 14 games in. So wait, so you're, you're saying that he's a headache, but now you're saying like, the team's going to trade a first round pick for him. If he's already a headache, 18 games into, into his career. Why is the team going to give up a first round pick instead of just waiting for the draft? Because teams that are in win now mode right now, teams like like Green Bay, they got a Hall of Fame quarterback that is bitching for playmakers. Honestly, you got to give Rodgers what he wants because you're not going to pay him all this money and not give him the weapons that he desires. So they got to buckle up and say, you know what? If we're going to win something, if we're going to be contenders, fuck it. We'll bite the bullet. We'll give the Jets a first rounder or a second rounder and we'll get Elijah Moore. I don't think they're getting a first rounder for him though, dude. Maybe so, a second dude. round. I don't think you're getting a first for him. I don't give think me so. a second, a second rounder from a good team. I could, I could absolutely see. And I do it. First I mean, at this point, at, that, at this point, I you get a second rounder. I do it on a heartbeat and move on because yeah. you don't need the distraction. You don't need to have him inactive every Sunday. You don't need to have the locker room. If anything, this could divide the locker room where some guys are on his side, some guys are not on his side. Like, what the fuck are we doing? It's just a problem. It's a legitimate problem. Sucks now it's a distraction. It, it does suck, but you know what? That's the beauty of having a deep wide receiver depth. That we have. We got Jeff Smith in there. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe this might be something where Mims yeah, gets elevated. He's okay what he has. You know what I mean? Like, but again, fellas, this is this is some bullshit. This is real big time bullshit. We did not need this on a Thursday night heading into Denver. Three game winning streak. We don't need this. We don't, dude. I'm I'm looking at tickets right now to go get, you know, I, I want to go see them play the Patriots. And now now this is like a thorn in our side. Honestly, get rid of this motherfucker, get a second rounder, and we know what Joe can do with two second round picks. Nope, I agree. Dan, thanks for coming, man. We appreciate it. Man. You too. You got it. Go Jets.
Listen, so, man, and so, I, well, I, I, I get the anger, dude. Like, I get the anger because, like, literally, I'm like an excited Jets fan. I'm wearing Jet stuff to the gym. I'm wearing, like, I'm like, everybody's talking Jets. I'm like, we're four and two. Like, all these things. And now it's like, this is an, un, this distraction is just crazy. Like, how are we here with a player that we're like, oh, man, we, like, we were at a point where we we're happy to have Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore. Like, oh, we can maybe trade Corey Davis at the trade deadline. Uh, Remember those conversations not yep, too long I ago? Do. Or, oh, you know, you know, we're happy Barrios came back. But, you know, we have like, like Elijah Moore is part of the blueprint for the future. Like all these let's, young let's stars also, growing let's, together. Let, let's remember that Debo Samuel also requested a trade. I know it wasn't during the season. It was during the off season, but if the Niners could ultimately get that situation repaired, but that was money. That was all about money. He won the contract. He's like, I, know, I, I gave know. you, I gave you running back plays, pay me as a top level receiver. And they paid him. This can't be, this isn't about money. He was in year two. It's nothing to do about money. This is about, I'm unhappy being on your team. I want out. That's what he's telling you, dude. He, I could don't say, he could say that all he wants, but he also has two and a half years under contract. But, uh, but saying no it's money, the, Douglas the, doesn't have to listen to the that. Debo thing was about money. This is about I don't want to be in your organization more. I want out of here. So that's a problem. So that's, you know, the fact that it got to this point is crazy, which I don't understand it all the way that it's even this. It's just this crazy. But and I understand people saying, you know, you want him out. But I think, honestly, if you don't trade him, is he active on Sunday? And I'm guessing no. This right? Sunday, probably not. No. The following week, maybe. I mean, maybe, maybe he could he be envious of Garrett Wilson, all the attention out of fans have loved him and rookie of the week. But I mean, this is, this so what, is pro what, football, what does he bro? think he's gonna go somewhere and just automatically be the number one wideout? But dude, like uh, most, most like, of the good teams have two or three legitimate weapons and they spread the ball around. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm telling you, dude, and I was sitting here like, you know, get the tight ends more involved, throw the ball more to the running backs. Like, I was, you know, just all right. We will go to Joe Cat. Yo, uh, what's up, man? What's up, dude? What's up, boys. Uh, never, typical, never, right? Uh, never, no. never a dull moment, my friend. Never a dull moment. Nope. I sorry I couldn't call in on Tuesday. I was working, but a uh, great game last Sunday. I was watching the game uh, at the pumpkin patches. I got yelled at my wife because I was uh, I was in Connecticut and I had it live on my phone the whole time, like on the hayride. And, like, do you really have the jet game on your pocket? I'm like, dude, we're winning right now. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, fuck Elijah Moore. Get this fucking guy off the team. Fuck him. Get it, that's it. He's played what fourteen games. He was hurt last season. He's gonna yeah. talk like this. He's getting all that nonsense from AJ Brown. His, his he can you know what? Send him to Philly. What's up, Alma? Send but see, but, hey, but Joe, but I got a couple questions for you though. I agree yeah. with you. But the first question is: It's Thursday, man. The chances they get him traded by Sunday are probably very yeah. slim because Joe Douglas is gonna play the game. Yeah. Is he active or inactive on Sunday? No, you put that motherfucker in his place, and you put him on the fucking bench. Don't even tell him to get on the fucking plane. You tell him to stay here in Jersey because th this is it, dude. This is a team effort. I don't give a shit. Like, I'm a realistic Jet fan, dude. I don't care that Zach's throwing 10 times a game. I don't care if he's throwing 18 times a game. We're getting wins. I don't care about this is a team effort. They want to preach that whole this is a whole different culture change. You, send, you leave this guy in fucking Jersey, and you tell him, you know what? Fuck you. If this team bends to him, then the season's over. That's well, I mean, it. I agree. He can't be active. I, I think he can't. Like, you know no, what? No. That's and, it. Then, and then it. the other thing is, so now, now, so, now the, the entire NFL knows that he wants to be traded. I mean, this shit's all over the place. It's the probably biggest story tonight. So now it's like, what is the minimum that you'd want in order to get him out of here? I mean, I I, I, me, it's like I, a second rounder, right? I would take anything to get this fucking cancer off. It. No, nah. I can't do that. No, nah. I can't. So somebody, you wouldn't, a fifth round pick? I wouldn't do that, dude. Listen, I, if we don't get, I'll, I'll meet. I'll meet. If we get a second round, I'm in. If we get, it's got to be at least a second rounder. It, right. Yeah. If we get a, yeah. if, you know what? If we don't get what we want, you let them fucking rot. But and that's then, the whole thing. Like you can, you can say, you know what? We we're not getting the value we want for you. And you're not getting targets now. You're gonna get even less when you're inactive every week. And you're not. It. You're gonna stay here until we can figure out what we can get the best compensation. Right. Let him rot for two years until he's up with his contract, and then some shit ass team will pick him up. Like Carolina, when he's got three year receiver, it's unproven like Mems. And you let these fucking, anybody who wants to run their mouth, you let them sit. That's it. These guys, it came from him. There's no backstory. There's no nothing. He went on his Twitter. He posted this shit. What's his face? Richie from Jets Media saw him after dinner with Jamal Adams. And uh, he, Richie said it today on YouTube. That yeah, he, I mean, that, that kind of shit does. I mean, that's, they're all friends. Like, the whole A.J. Brown thing, the way A.J. Brown got his way out of Tennessee and got his big payday and everything right. else. They're all assholes. They're all the, assholes. But I just, dude. I'm just wondering. But, dude, the other, for a lot of those guys, though, it was about money, dude. A.J. Right. Brown wanted to get paid. Debo Samuel wanted to get paid. D.K. Metcalf wanted to get paid. Right. Elijah Moore's not getting paid this year. Doesn't matter where the fuck he is. He's still, he's still under contract. 
So no. this is this got to be something else more than money. It's but about, if he's not getting targets, he's ultimately not going to get paid when the time right. comes. But dude, in your second year, you're playing this fucking game seriously. Of course, of course he's also a fucking. That's lunatic. fucking insane. Right, he's a so, lunatic talking like this. But it's or also, or it's something beyond just the targets. Yep. Yeah, it's also on the Jets too. It's also but he's a slot guy. He's I agree. Five nine. He's five you, nine. You got two receivers that five. have talent that that aren't getting used right. It right. absolutely falls a little bit on the Jets. Right, but you know what? The game didn't call for that. That's I what agree. all. The, all these people attack Zach Wilson. Yep. Oh, well, he didn't throw 300 yards. The fucking yep. game didn't call for it. There you yep. go. Run it that's down. Why, that's why fucking... he's wrong for doing it. Time and place. Three right. like if this, like, like if, he, if he's mad, if he's mad, say, like, in week 15 or 14, and he's got, what, 35 catches and 500 yards, you know what? If you want to trade, if you want to request trade at the end of the season when it's over, be like, you know what? I got to get the fuck out of here. At the end of the season, be like, you know what? We can't find a role for you on our offense. You're out of here. Right. But to do it with with Zach back three games, trying to find it, just find his way in the offense, and you're fucking winning. It's you're selfish. winning. It's like, it's, it's selfish, wild, dude. It's selfish. It's disgusting. He's shown his true colors, and every Jet fan in this chat that bought this motherfucker's jersey should Oof. throw it in the garbage because he's. That's a why piece I stopped buying jerseys. I, I was a, ready to buy his jersey last year. This one That's surprises. Why I, this is why I stopped buying yeah, jerseys. Fuck, fuck Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore, if you see this. Fuck you. Stay in Jersey <laughs> and go fucking suck every Jet fan's balls. Stay the fuck home. Thanks, fellas. Wow. Love. Good night, man. We I'm, are just burying this guy. I'm just, I'm just wild that got to this point. I was an Elijah Moore fan. Like I, you Me know, too. we've met him Me before, too. and um, yeah, I'll share the link. You guys, come on, share this your sucks, thoughts. Man. This is what we're here for. I, I just, I genuinely like the player, man. It's. And what fun. bums me out the most is we're fucking four and two for the first time in like a decade. Yep. Like this is the time for us to be excited and happy and all fired up. Like let's bring on the Denver Broncos. I'm worried about like trap game and this guy and that guy and injuries and this. this shit. Now I'm worried about trap game. That that wasn't even a thought on my mind. But now you got all this shit going on. This is a legitimate distraction now. Yep. There is this is no. I mean, yep. for a young team, this is absolutely a distraction. This is absolutely a distraction because now it's like you go in the locker room tomorrow when they meet the media, and now you that, that's the first question they're asked. Nobody's mm-hmm. gonna give two shits about the game. It's about what, what happened to Elijah. Are you on his side or you're not on his side? What do you have to say about him? They're going to say no comment or would like him as a teammate. That's all they're going to say. And that's what I worry about, man. The locker room starting to fracture because you know that he's got some supporters. So. I guess Elmo went off on your video. <laughs> oh, did he? Dude, I, I, haven't, I haven't got to all the comments yet. I haven't had a chance. I was, wow. I was teaching, dude. I was teaching in school and my phone's blowing up. And I'm like, and my buddy comes up. He's like, dude, Elijah Moore wants to be traded. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, like this fucking team. Here we are. All right, we'll bring on Anthony. What's up, man? What's up, boys? How you been? What's up, man? You guys in a while. What's it's up? It's been a minute. You've been blowing up, us dude? off. Yeah, i um, just been pretty busy lately. I got my license like a few months ago, so I've just been well, driving. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. I'm in my senior year now. It's awesome to just be driving to school every day. There you go. Living the good, good life. You, man. Yeah, I know. I love it. So what are your thoughts on this Elijah Moore scenario? I think he's being a straight pussy. I don't understand oh, shit. why he's just getting like – like this right now because like we're, we've won three games in a row we're four and Better two say hi to elmo we finally yo it's good elmo like we're having a winning season for the first time in seven years i don't understand what he why he's doing this like i read a stat earlier he's been targeted just as much as Corey davis and garrett wilson and we're targeted less run- than them he's targeted less than them he's okay, the most fairly, though, it's yeah, he's like, he's like fifth or sixth on the team in targets right now yeah i know it's just like and we're running the ball so well. we're not even throwing the ball right now. We we just been last two games we just been running the ball so much and it's really working. Listen, we're winning games right says. now. This is such a distraction. I really wonder how what the team's gonna respond. You know what I mean? Well, I think their first response is gonna be making him inactive on Sunday. Yep, that's it. And, th- and then after that, I mean, you start looking at the trade market. If they can get the proper value, I think he's out of here. But I, I don't think Douglas is just gonna cave if and we trade, trade him for him, a third not, or a fourth round pick be for a while. If he were, I don't think he's getting traded. To be honest with you, but if you were to be traded, it's not gonna be for a while. I think yeah, he'll get while. traded, but I think it'll probably take a few weeks. It's gonna take a week or so. I, I think. It, I, I mean, I think like, I want. I want a good. I want something good. If we're gonna trade him, I want something good because I really like Elijah Moore. I just don't understand why. Like, he's in his second year. He's played, what, 17 games? Yep. Like, it's just ridiculous. See, think, and, and his reps haven't even exactly been great this year. So, yeah. But I think also that I think the trade will happen sooner rather than later because you don't need this distraction, man. Like, I yeah. think the Jets, like, you work the phones, like, saying, listen, man, if you really want to make me your best offer, don't fuck around with me. Like, don't yeah. play this. We'll offer you a fifth and get counter and this and that. But listen, this kid's getting moved. Give me your best offer moving on because it's a distraction. Yeah, like I every know. day, every Sunday he's inactive, it's going to be a problem. Every day in practice, it's going to be a constant question, constant bullshit. 
And for a young team with this culture, it's the last thing you fucking need. Like, yeah, this I know. Is we don't need to be worrying about. Like, this is just oh. like this is like I never, I never seen this happen before. A, a, a team's winning and the culture's really changing, and some guy on the team is bitching about his targets. Like, I think this is. He ridiculous. must have listened like, to all like, those solid quotes about not getting exactly paid. Like this, I don't get it. But it's just the thing about money. He's like, you're not going to get paid for another fucking two years anyway. Exactly. He's in his second year. And he well, still he's not, has exactly, he's not exactly building a resume right now to get paid. Yeah, but dude. Yeah, like, I know. He's well, like, well, I get that. But, is yet. but the prime time, the thing is, like, you, you're coming off games where you're running the ball and you're winning. Your offense is going to have to change to win football games. So no, there could I be agree. a shriek, where, especially this weekend, where, you know what? They're going to sell out to stop the run. They're going to have to pass the fucking football. You're going to get your chances. But you're what? You're gonna, you, have, you have to have instant fucking success tomorrow or I'm out? Like, wait, yeah, and Tyson, I want you to change the offense. I better Tyson. get, what, eight? How, but how does this work? Though? Like, I want to understand the conversation. All right, coach, we got to change the offense because I want to get more carries or more touches. Okay, so we're going to promise some catches. We're going to promise you six catches a week so you're happy. If you well, don't get that, you got you got to leave. I, I think it has less to do with the, the actual targets and more to do with the usage, the routes he's running. I mean, we keep seeing him running all these vertical routes where he's double covered instead of just using him underneath, using him in the slot. Like, that's where he's most effective with the ball in his hands, making guys miss. And he hasn't had an opportunity to do that yet. So I, I agree it's early in the season, but I also I get his frustration. Though. And we're six games into the year. And Zach came back easy, three man. games ago. We're still getting him more. We're still trying to get him ni nice and confident in the offense still. We, we're we winning right now. I don't even understand why this is happening right now. I still don't get it. We're four and two. And he's I hate everybody for this, this happening right now. Yep. This I is more. I hate the team. I hate, I hate fucking Andy, everybody. Andy, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate right it. All right, have a good night, boys. It was nice good talking to you, man. guys. Good talking to you, man. All right, see you. Yeah, I mean, this is just wild, dude. I get it. Like, I, I understand, you know, he's not maybe not being used correctly. They have the conversation. So if they had the conversation, say, two weeks ago, and nothing changed this week, well, guess what? Nobody didn't change this week? They weren't passing the fucking football. Well, you wonder if the conversation was, oh, you know, once once Zach comes back, that's when, you know, the playbook is going to start to open up. We'll start using you in a different way. And, you know, he's probably like, all right, we're, we're three games in. Nothing's changed yet. I'm so pissed this happened. Like, this is the last thing I feel like dealing with tonight. It is. Like, mm -hmm. I just, yep. like, I'm just, like, as a we're, Jet fan. We're, we're four and two when we're talking about this bullshit. Like, like, I'm, like, literally happy about, like, football for the first time in probably a decade. Where I'm actually walking around positive about my team, talking about all these different things. And this is the shit we're dealing with. It says, you got to be kidding me. Yeah, I mean, a lot I'm of people, a lot that. of people bought his jersey, man. He he did that autograph he's signing a, at what the, a the car dealership. Yep. And he's, he's, you know, he's people are bringing him pizza. And Richie brought him pizza. They're all taking pictures. You know, it's like all these things about him, and it's like, I mean, you think he's one, of, like you think he's one of ours. Kind of the same thing with Jamal Adams. Like, you know, this is one yep. of our guys. This yep. is one of our culture guys. This is one of our leaders that we're gonna build our offense around. And then you get smacked in the face with this shit. And you're like, are you fucking kidding me? It feels very similar. Yeah. It's I mean, the same fucking and, thing, and, dude. And Jamal, and Jamal showed a lot more on the field too. It's the same, he, really the same thing. Pro Bowls and winning MVP awards and Pro Bowls and shit. And and dude, like we didn't turn. So we who turned on who, Mo? Guess who turned on who? Elijah Mo, Elijah Moore turned his back on the Jet fans and the Jets by requesting a trade. That's who turned on him. What do we do? We've been saying for the last two weeks, get him more, get him more touches, use him better. So he he turned on us and said, you know what? I want fucking out. So get your story straight. Who's the diva? Who wants out? Did the Jets fans say kick him out? No. He asked for out. You want out? Get the fuck out. Right? I, what am I, I missing I, here? I just want to know what prompted that. From going home on a personal day to think about whatever the conversation he's they had was. taking his ball and going home. That's what he's doing. Well, clearly, again, whatever his conversation was with LaFleur and Salah, yep. they clearly just either dismissed it, told him to go fuck himself, we're, we're not going to yep. change our offense for you. Whatever the conversation was, I mean... To, to go home on a personal day and then come back and say, all right, I want out. Well, that, I mean, that I knew. I Dude, that minute that came out, I knew this was going on. Like, I, I, I we'll go to the next caller. Fuck, this shit pisses me off. I hate this kind of stuff. I hate I, it. I blame everybody. But it's just because the, these are guys that you you want to believe in. Like, you have these young but, guys, like the the, uh, the football first guys. But, like, part of, like, this new regime and evaluating them is also getting your young players to buy in, Right. Yeah, oh well, yeah, maximize the potential. But I mean, this is just this is a, a weird look. It's just I'm pissed at him. I'm pissed it's all happening. We, we, we heard a lot about Salah adjusting the offense, maximizing it to fit the player's potential. Well, now this is two receivers that have skill that we're not using yeah. that want out. So yeah, I mean we, we can shit on Elijah Moore all night, but it, yeah, it's I mean, not, and I, don't, this, I don't personally think it's just him. So and this all this shit here, he stopped following Zach Wilson, oh, all this shit. shit. 
That is textbook the shit AJ Brown did and all these other receivers did. It's part of your it's part of but your blueprint. He said he loves his teammates, right? Yeah, of course. But this part of your blueprint to get out of town is you do the same thing they all do, right? You you request a trade, you start unfollowing shit on social media, you start doing all these different things, and that's why he's gonna be inactive. I mean, this is just fucking nonsense. So annoyed by this. It sucks. What's up, Bubs? How's it going? What's up, Bubs? You tell me. Uh <laughs> not good. Uh, surprised? It, what do you what do you what are you thinking? It, I'm not I mean I'm surprised, but at the same time I'm not shocked because this always happens to the Jets. But I mean this is we'll probably get into a lot more so this is why I don't buy any more jerseys. I Thank this you. is why my I gotta name you have it. have a two year shelf life and that's it. And my next jersey is I'm looking at getting a Klecko when it comes into my size. So Smart that's i my days of Le'Veon Bell t shirt. <laughs> hey, I'm stick on. with the legends. Um my Le'Veon Bell t-shirt, Darnold jersey, all this stuff is just terrible. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, it's just, it's so frustrating. Like you guys mentioned, we're four and two, three game win streak. I mean, I think it's, I mean, I think it's selfish on Elijah Moore. I mean, I, I, I get that, you know, definitely the team and you know the offense could have something to do with it too. But like, like nobody else. Can, you know, look at look, like you don't hear CJ Uzama playing. He's barely gone in. You know what? You know what? You know why nobody's complaining, dude? Because they're, they're winning. fucking winning. <laughs> exactly. That's why you you know how much of an asshole you look like when you do that's why it's like I'm really pissed that Elijah Moore this is happening. But a part of me keeps thinking that there has to be something else to make him go over the edge like this when you're actually yeah. winning football games. And the Jets are a feel good story of the NFL, yeah. right? Like the why, Jets why like wouldn't he want to be a part for, of this? Like, how would you want to not, you know, like it's just wild, man. I that, don't get it. That's why I say I, I say this. I mean, I know Dan said it, everybody's saying it. I have no issue with trading him because look, when Salah had his press pre- his introductory press conference, you know he keeps saying things. You know he wants guys that are here. You know all about winning and all this yep. stuff. Clearly, Elijah Moore isn't. Clearly, he's all worried about the personal numbers and his personal stats and doesn't care about winning. I mean, you know, Michael Carter was the number one running back last year. Now he's number two. He's Good not point. complaining. Elijah Vera Tucker's moving all over the offense line. He's not complaining. Great point. DJ Mosley's take restructuring his contract. All these things. I and mean, if, you, if you're being if you're being fair, Elijah Moore could learn from Michael Carter. Michael Carter's handling yeah. this like a pro. Exactly. Like Brees Hall has become and, a superstar in front of us. Michael yeah. Carter's getting his touchdowns, doing his thing, not saying a word. I, and Michael, oh, the only difference, I guess you could say, is that. Uh, Garrett Wilson, I mean, he was kind of handed it, right? He was given the the first team reps right away. They they didn't even put Sauce as the number one corner at the towards the end Garrett of training Wilson's camp. Also like, uh, I'm I'm, I'm just saying. I mean, Michael Carter, he was still listed as the RB one on the depth chart when it first. But came I'm saying, out. like, Buzz makes a good point uh, though, where it's like, you know, Michael Carter took a step back. Brees Hall's the guy. He's been an excellent team player, becoming actually a team leader. AVT is playing every fucking position on the goddamn offense. Not saying a word. And Uzama lost all his his catches to fucking Conklin. Carter's yeah. still getting touches though, but nowhere's near what he probably yeah. thought he was probably get a lot more. I mean, yeah, it's just it's terrible. It, it's just this is just such a jet thing to happen. And like you got sauce running off with the cheese head, all these great things, and then it's just it's terrible. I mean, I and I mean I, I you know, I, I think what would be good is you know ship him to Carolina. What are they? One and five. Let him let him put up a thousand two hundred yards there, and, and you know go three and fourteen this year, and yep. you know he'll be he'll be forgotten about over there. I mean, it's just I mean, look what happened to Robbie Anderson over there. It's just it's such a mess. This is like we keep getting punched in the gut. Like we think we have it with Jamal Adams, you don't got it. You think? We but have it's it weird though. It's just like you know, like you figure Bryce Hall. Like that's a good point. Bryce Hall is, is you know basically he's been silent. He, you know he got benched. He got he got passed by by Sauce and DJ Reed. He's been quiet. Request trade. You haven't started nothing, like nothing on social media, nothing like that. You know, this is just yeah. the AJ Brown. The AJ Brown thing is fair. I get it, but dude, it's six games into the season, and he's not getting paid this way anyway. Mm-hmm. Like he, like dude, if he has ten catches or eighty catches this year, he's not getting a new contract next year, no. right? Yeah, he's and, not. And you and, got- and, and go in this route. I mean, I think it's less likely that he's actually going to get traded somewhere where he could thrive. Yeah. I mean, it's going to take and, a while now. You guys made a good point earlier. Like a couple more things, like. You guys were saying like it's not like this is where we're talking. It's not like we're in week sixteen and he's got exactly. you know, no barely any catches and four hundred, five hundred yards and you know and it's not and the Jets are winning. It's not like we're going into week sixteen. The Jets are a four win team. Wilson's playing like garbage and they're not moving the ball. Exactly. And Elijah Moore's not doing anything. It's week six. We're winning games. We beat some really good defenses. 
I mean, like the run game's been working. It's just so frustrating. And Elijah Moore too, like he's played 17 games. He's shown a lot of potential, yep. you know, especially last year late in the season. But it's not like this guy's Megatron. It's not like he's had back to back a thousand yard seasons and all of a sudden his exactly. numbers are taking a massive dip. Like you played one full season and you're in your second and year. And he got hurt last year. Exactly. It's right. like and, and like I don't know. Like if you want to be a leader. You should be fired up for Brees Hall doing well. You should be fired up to see these other young guys playing yep. well. Not complaining that you're not getting targeted. Especially when you know, you know, in order for this Jets team to have success, they have to have a well-rounded offense, and the passing game is going to have to take off. It's yep. going to have to. Like, you know, like now, teams are going to say, you know what? We're going to focus on Corey Davis and stopping the run and make Zach Wilson find other guys, and that's where Mike LaFleur is going to scheme people open and get everybody a chance. Yep. But it's just... This shit is just – and I cannot believe we're dealing with this in week seven of the season. This is just – Like, we had no draft talk in October. Now we're talking about trade requests. But, like, two more things. I also have a quick question, too. Like, um, uh, my – with the uh, – in terms of, like, the receiving core now, if Moore's obviously going to be inactive. Yep. Do you see – I mean, Barrios, obviously, you know, he's had a couple, you know, the, a couple of jet sweep touchdowns. Do you see him kind of becoming more of a, a player now in the receiving – receiving? I court? think so. They love Barrios. Yep. Him, and, him and Zach have plenty of chemistry too. Yeah, he's going to play probably like 80% of the, the snaps yep. in the slot, and they'll put Corey see, Davis and, you'll uh, see Jeff and Wilson Smith on the more. outside. They like, they like Jeff Smith. And you probably – you know what? You'll probably see more. You can use Ruckert more now. You yep. can probably use the tight ends more. Like, you can you can just – like everybody keeps talking about Mims. I don't think Mims is going to get those chances. I think it's going to probably see Ruckert, yep. more to tight ends, more Smith, and like you said, more Barrios. Yeah. I just I just hope why, – why, why not give Mims some reps, though? Ultimately, if you're going to trade him, which it seems like they kind of have to at this point <laughs> – Mims and Elijah Moore are going to be playing, they're, they're be playing cards yeah. together, and I want to be traded uh, part of this room. <laughs> yeah. I, I just hope this doesn't, like – I Bart Scott made a good point today. I was watching on Jets Game Plan, I think it was. But, like, he, he feels that this locker room, a lot of strong character guys in this locker room, a lot of guys that, you know – Elijah true. Moore was one of those guys. <laughs> uh, who knows? I, yeah, I mean, it's just – but, like, I just hope this doesn't – like affect that's why I feel like if this is true, it's something with Elijah Moore and like it's not the coaches and or what it's something internally deeper. It's just him being so frustrated. You gotta get him out of here because you guys mentioned it too. Like you can't let this affect the locker room. If you go, you know, it's a distraction, dude. Front, this yeah, is now distraction. a distraction. And Thursday night going into Friday on a game that you know it's like you're getting ready to fly yep. out on Saturday and you got this bullshit to deal with. Yep, and it's a winnable game, and then you got a division opponent yep. next week, and like it's just <sighs> all these great things, and it's just this always happens to the Jets every single year. It like, uh, it's just, uh, that's a three run Homer. That's a three run Homer for Bregman. Uh, let's great. go. We got a let's go. Live more requests and trades and seven. Yeah, now, now you guys are feeling what I felt like two weeks ago. Oh, I don't know. understand what your points are, bro. You're really not making any sense to me. I know you're trying to defend. You're trying to defend Elijah more, but you're really not making any good points. So that's just yeah, my point of view. Third bullpen. <laughs> Bubs, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. Yep, thanks for having me on. Good talking, Bubs. You too. I mean, this. Is I I, I can't even like take a, a strong stance on this without knowing like what actually happened that led to him escalating this so quickly. Yep. Like I I can't get like so mad at either side. I'm just mad at everybody right now that we're yep. four and two and talking about this shit. It's crazy, man. Whoops, hit the wrong button. What's up, Joe? Hey, what's up, guys? You know, it's been what's a up, little Joe? bit. Nice hat. Yeah, thanks. You know, it's the. 2022 draft class i'm just i like that i mean are we two and four or four and two and that that's what it feels like right now i mean yep. i don't feel like we're a winning organization with this but here's the thing we're four and two we're a game away from the bills and we're like it tied for the second best team in the afc Joe, you better say hi to elmo hey elmo what's up dude <laughs> Um, but we're t but we're tied as the second best team in the AFC with the Chiefs, and this comes out like, are you kidding me? Like, I don't, I can't explain it. Just no one can. It just doesn't nope. make any sense. It's the <laughs> worst possible time to pull this kind of bullshit, man. You're you're winning. Everybody's buying in. Everybody's contributing. You're playing complimentary football. All this stuff, and it's like, all right, now we have a distraction, and now you have. Well, you know, he's going to be inactive on Sunday. I'd be shocked if he played. 
yeah. now it's like now that the locker room's got to deal with this shit. Like this is gonna be like this is like Rich Semini's probably beaten off in his house right now. He's so happy that he has this story to deal with for the next two days. Like this is when he this is his this is, he lives for this shit. Yeah, I mean this is this is pure media gold. I mean the media yep. eat this shit up like for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I yep. mean it's it, even if we win someday, it, like you said. They're going to be talking about Elijah Moore. How's Elijah doing? How's your relationship with Elijah? I hope they do. You know, it'll be, it'd be a real good kick in his ass so the Jets win the game and he's inactive. Like, yeah, listen, bro, yeah. we're a team, man. We're moving on without you. you you're, you're not, you obviously, you're a part of us. Now you're not. We're, we moved on. This is it. Like, doesn't do much for his trade value, though. Man, you know, it'd be, fucking tough shit, dude. Sit out for the rest of the year then. Who cares? You know, it'd be very funny if, you know, we, I, I mean, it's unlikely that this would happen, but if we activate Mims and he goes off, you know, on the Denver defense. I mean, it's unlikely, but like, imagine that. Like, we just start Mims over Elijah Moore. And we're like, you next know man up. Being next up. man up mentality. Next have. And you know what? Um, I, in a way, Mims' trade request looks better than Moore's because here's the thing with Mims, it was during the preseason, you know? Yep. And, and, he, and he's kept quiet about it. Yes. Yep. And I kind of respect him more. But here's the thing Mims hasn't even gotten dressed in the game mm -hmm. and i kind of respect that like he, he needs to he wants to be in a game at least like yep. like taking some snaps yeah he's, like he's kept his head or... down yeah he's kept his head down shit. he's working hasn't said a word you give but him a lot of credit more is like oh, i want the targets i want the i want to be the the main guy in the in the like i want like but the thing is like to it, to me there's something more behind the story something else had to happen but like i'd like to know if there's nothing else behind the story which i find really hard to believe it's like, what does he say? I need to have eight catches every Sunday or I want to leave. Like, what the fuck is the conversation? I need to have five catches a I, week. Like, nobody's that, getting them. I, Garrett Wilson's not getting that. I, I don't think the conversation at all had anything to do with, like, the, the number of targets. I, I think, again, it, it's about usage. It's how he's being used. It's about the routes that he's running, not fitting what he does best. You, you know what this kindly this kind of, like, reminds me of a little bit? Remember Antonio Brown back in 2018? Yep. He threw a 10 for in practice. They kicked yep. him out of practice. And they said, oh, is it a, a groin injury or something? Yep. And then they, like, you know, they traded him away. And he just – I'm not saying, like, Elijah Moore is, like, crazy like Antonio Brown. Not really. But <laughs> in a way, it, it kind of has a similar type of feeling to what Antonio Brown did. Because the Steelers are a winning organization, you know, with the – winning ways and everything everyone bought in like that type of shit but we have winning ways now we're four and two and he's requesting a trade it's just it it just gives off like an antonio brown type vibe but it's weird though because elijah moore never came off like that he always seemed like that team guy the football guy embraced everything he was all about getting chemistry with zach wilson putting the extra time in like you know it's just I mean, he fooled me, dude. Uh, it was, you know, I'm completely shocked by this one. I'm I, shocked it got to this point. I never in a million years thought this was going to be like this. I mean, I, 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 my best friend's a Steelers fan. He all, he always talks about Antonio Brown to the point where he's blue in the face. I remember he always, when he heard about the trade rumor, he was like, "Oh, this guy's such a clown." I thought he was, but a dude. Team but the weird thing ben. is, like, but a lot of these guys, it's about having the big time contract, all this shit. Dude, yeah. you're six games into the season, like, yeah. and your quarterback just came back three games. Winning. Like, it's just, it's not like, like I said, if this was week 14, I'll be like, all right, man, this season's been shit. I'm not yeah. getting what I want. It's not going to work. And then even at that point, you have the conversation after the season, not at week 14. But even now to do it this early is just, it doesn't make any sense. Well, if we have like a losing record, it even makes more sense with if we have a losing record. We have a winning record. That's Joe, even to your point, if the Jets were one and five right now, the offense is the offense is averaging ten points a game. We can't do shit. And he's not getting like that. Maybe then, maybe then you could have this conversation. But even then, it's still too early. Dude, six games. That's a seventeen fucking game season. It just, like, I'm so, I just can't uh, unless shit happened last year that we don't know about. I am just shocked, man. If, it's just it, here's the thing. If I'm one of the Jets players. Like Sauce or Garrett Wilson, and you know Elijah Moore is like in the locker room. I would pull a Will Smith, Chris Rock on him. I'd <laughs> slap him and say, "Dude, but you, you gotta, gotta be." And that's and but that's the other thing that we really haven't talked about is you have such a young team now. This is a test for Salah and Joe Douglas because Brees Hall just got here, Garrett Wilson just got here. All these guys were there the last two years. Now Elijah Moore, like this whole young nucleus, Elijah Moore is one of these guys that they're all close. 
How do they handle it? Because now this is mm-hmm. like right at right prime time. Whose side are they on? Yeah. Whose side are they on? And how do the Jets handle it where they don't piss off the rest of the locker room? Especially if the team is could be wrong. Because in if if there is more to the story, you know that Elijah be. Moore has shared that with probably every one of his teammates that he's close with. And, and, that's, then, and, yeah, then, and, and, then, and they're and they're only getting his point of view. And you, you can you can bet that Salah's probably not addressing this with the team. Yeah. So they're only hearing Elijah Moore's side of it, most likely. Well, that's the thing, man, because there's going to be a time where once Elijah gets traded, the real story is going to come out. That's going to be like, well, this is what really happened. It's going to, that's the way the world works. You you bite your tongue. You take all the, you take all the bullets now until you get out of Dodge and then you share what really happens. And then if there is something deeper to happen, prime time, then it's going to be like all these guys can be like, you know what? This is how they treat Elijah. This is what really Mm -hmm. happens. And then that other part of this happens. So Mm -hmm. it's just, it's, it's not domino. Such horse shit. But, Here's the thing I would want in return. I I would go to Carolina, say, hey. Or Green Bay. Spe- or, or Green Bay. But I would go to Carolina especially because they're having a fire sale right now in a way. You get Brian Burns I would back? Come up, say, hey, you want your second round pick back? Do you want Elijah Moore? He's talented. You know, I, I want DJ Moore as well for that. For a second round pick and Elijah Moore. Who says no? I mean, I, I I know a lot of people want to get a pick for him, but we're in win now territory. That's, that's good we're point. in we're in kind of win now territory. We're 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 like in the same type of conversation with the Chiefs <laughs> and the Bills. That's like uncharted territory right now for us. Well, that's we why I think to, they're yeah, probably going to wait a couple weeks. If they're still in that that category, maybe you're making more of a move to to win now. If they're maybe back towards 500, maybe you're making a move for a draft pick. Yeah, I mean, I maybe, yeah, maybe that is a good choice to just hold and wait. But the option of getting like a DJ Moore, I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, but the thing, the thing about money, hold, right? the thing about holding and waiting is this is going to be a bona fide distraction now. This yeah. is you have a, a potentially star receiver sitting inactive every week that wants to be out. And there's going to be every day. What's the status? What's this? It's going to it's going to pester the locker room. It's going to just going to be an annoyance for everybody, man. Yeah, this is something you got to get done within a week. But get the fuck out. We got to move on, and then do your damage control if it's something else behind the scenes. Yeah, because, because there's got to be because you got to be honest. Like Sal is going to get grilled like a motherfucker when this comes up. I mean, this <laughs> yep. this is when Samini always guys are going to they're going to break it down. Like, yep, they're going to go after him. Be like. What did you do to try to, you know, how did you address the, the offense? Did you find ways to maximize his potential? Is it concerning that two receivers have now requested a trade in a span of three months? Bingo. Yeah, yeah no, it's it's just, it's not good. It's not a good look for LaFleur either. I mean, especially for LaFleur. Because mean, they, the thing is this, like, and I, I hear what everybody's saying about, you know, the whole A.J. Brown thing. It's not like Garrett Wilson's getting 12 catches a week right now. So no. what is he next? You know what? I'm not getting my oh, 10 no. catches a week. I want out. But you know what I mean? No. Like That's next year. But what I'm saying is, like, I don't like. What did they expect this early? This is the way it is. It's it's so early in the season. Actually, actually, that's a that's kind of a weird trend, you know, with our second year wide receivers. You know, you know, you got Denzel <laughs> Mims having kind of a sophomore slump. Then you have Elijah Moore with this crap going on. What if Garrett Wilson is even worse? You know, imagine <laughs> that. that we, we, we already saw him a few times in training camp. Yeah. Like not happy with a few throws. I'll not take happy up, with like, a few I'll play take calls. Up, like I'll start covering badminton. Shit. I'll just be done. <laughs> if, if this, if we start losing motors, I'm covering badminton and fucking pickleball or all that shit is. I'll but, be done with this. But that could be a problem with the coaching. Really, if it, if it's, if it, there's more of a trend to this, that's again coaching. the trend right now. You got two receivers in the same boat. Prime time keeps saying it. Mims can't fit now. Elijah wants out. It's two receivers. I, I, you know, a part of me just wants Mims He's to go in there season. this week and just, you know. No, you know, you know what? He'll be, active, he'll be active. He'll be active and he'll get five. No, minutes. a part of me wants the Jets to go into Denver. You know, Elijah get eight catches. Barrios gets five catches. Corey Davis gets five catches. They win the fucking game. But like, we won without you. I yeah. Take care. Like, our offense can pass the ball. We just did it. You weren't here for it. Kiss off. Yeah. I mean, that's that, be man. a better way to do it. it. All right. Have good See night, you guys. Talk, it, man. That was, this sucks, but. It yeah. sucks for sure. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we get through it. We'll we have no choice, but I mean, this shit just drives me crazy. So we're going to go. Yankees coming you, back. Of course. So do you want a little bit of chaos before we go to quality callers, or do you want quality callers? Let's get some chaos first. I agree. What's up, man? <laughs> Nothing. Just I'm um, venting my frustration with some good old-fashioned Call of Duty. Well, that's exciting. That's how I get rid of my anger. 
So you're not even watching the show. You're just playing Call of Duty. Yeah, we appreciate that. No, I'm watching the show. I can multitask. Can't so, watch if you're watching the show, who was the last person that was on? I didn't pay attention to the name. Hi, Elmo. Get him off. Hi, Elmo. Uh, hey, Elmo, did you remember to feed Dorothy tonight? <laughs> Give us your take on Elijah Moore, man. We don't have time for your shit. <laughs> yeah, just frustrated. Just frustrated, you know. I guess Deadpool's right. You know, life is just bullshit interrupted by brief commercials of happiness. And now we're back to our regular schedule. Damn, that's dark. That's real dark. <laughs> <laughs> so what else you got for us, man? I'm just frustrated. You know, it's like... A I, I, I don't get it either. I don't get it either. It's like the passing game was going to come in time. I mean, he's... I mean, Wilson missed a lot of time with the injuries, trying to get back up to speed. It was gonna the passing game was gonna come if you just gave it time to wait. So do you, so do you think it's something more than just play calling and and usage in the offense? It, it has to be. It's just it, 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 there's just no other logical reason. It's like like I said, like we also have, we we know the passing game. No, that's just a light. That's just a glare of light from the camera. It's not. A good, I'm using my phone right now. Don't distract so, them, prime time. But yeah, it, it it just doesn't make sense to me. It's like I'm just frustrated. It's like, can we ever have nice things? Nope, not for more than a few weeks. Then the football guys take it I, away. I just, I'm just like, is it? I don't have words. Like, I'm. I say, I think does it. I do trust this org. I do. Like, I think the Jets of the past would probably crumble. Like I said, I do trust this organization to handle and make it through this. Well, they have no choice. They're going to trade. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, I'm I know. clearly distracted tonight, dude. This is not one of your better calls. You're, you're, <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is not. This is not one of your better calls at He's all. Clearly getting attacked no, to call of duty right now. I'm done with that shit. <laughs> I don't know time for that. Like I'm looking. Everybody's animated, all fired up, and he's he's distracted by his he's game. And call he's of just, duty. He's fucking. Get no time I saw. I saw where I was going after 30 seconds. What's up, Javid? Hey guys, how you doing? Save us, Javid. Oh man, I don't know if I can save you because I'm fucking pissed off. It's I I don't I, I don't I just don't get it. I I, I really I, I really really don't get it. It's I understand the frustration and it feels I feel like actually annoyed because when he made his tweet, obviously I didn't like it, but I was actually like defending him to like to other Jets fans. So I haven't been here for a while. I've been in school. What's the thing with Elmo and saying hi to him? You better say hi or bad things happen. <laughs> this is, this is, all right. Hi, Elmo. There you go. The problem solved. wasn't very enthusiastic. But all right. I'll accept it. <laughs> and just I, – I... Well, where, where, where do you think this goes from here? I mean, do you think Joe Douglas drags this out a couple weeks? Do you think they just cave, trade him right away? Do they, do they make him inactive on Sunday? I mean, where do you think they go from here? I think what was the report that he's most likely to be inactive – Think uh, how the fuck can he be right active, now? dude? Like, how do you? Well, how yeah, do he's you... not a practice today. If, if he doesn't yeah. practice like, tomorrow, and, and you know, and you know, he's not vested in your team. Like, he's asking for out. If you want out, I'm not gonna trust you on the field. I don't get two shits about you then, right? He said, "Why the? I I can't trust him on the field either at this moment." And I mean, we have moments where you know he was kind of. I mean, I'm, I'm I don't. He was kind of dogging it. Uh, his routes. I know, like. Yep. I watched this one QB breakdown thing, and a guy blamed Moore for the the pick that uh, oh against the Steelers, right? Yeah, because yeah. Moore's yeah. guy shouldn't have even been there if he was actually running his route uh, at a hundred percent. He should have came down with Moore. He wouldn't be able to break off of that. So, I mean, that kind of stuff. You know, maybe the anger had been coming in since before that. It was the Steelers game week four. So maybe yeah. sitting there thinking like, oh, I'm not even getting the ball on this play. It doesn't matter for me. And so he's, he's fucking just barely running the route. But uh, I, what I don't like about it is, it, I, as everyone's saying, it, it's so early in his career. It, yep. It's it's way too early. It's way too early in the season. And, like, I get you having some problems. If you have some problems with Zach, right? Yep. And as a fan, I, I can admit, you know, Zach hasn't been amazing. And I'm not right. doing this to bash Zach. But Zach is a young quarterback. you got to bring him along slowly. Having a running game is good for that. Every young quarterback you have isn't going to start off amazing like fucking Herbert did or or Mahomes did or anyone else. You have a lot of quarterbacks in this league took time to develop. A well, lot dude, the other thing, too, is, but the other thing, too, is you're growing your offense 
in real time when Zach missed the preseason and everything else. Like he's literally getting his legs back during live action, trying to figure it out. And he's trying to figure out, okay, now not am I learning getting back on the offense? I gotta learn how to use Conklin, Uzuma, Garrett Wilson, all this other shit. There's so much shit going on right now. To have this reaction to three games of Zach being back is insane when you're winning, dude. It is. It's- I'm telling you, if this was 10 weeks from now, I'm like, all right, dude, this is this is fucking wild that this is happening. It feels in a way like like he was watching his friends when they left him at Ole Miss, and he was doing his his last year of college. He's watching uh fucking DK play with Russell Wilson, and he's watching AJ Brown play with Tannehill, who's also a vet, and they have that running game, yeah. and get and they're all getting these these catches. And he's thinking, oh, when I get into the league, I'm gonna be doing all this. And AJ Brown's telling him, man, you're even better than me. And he's sitting there thinking, oh, I, I'm gonna be that guy. And he, he, it's it's not come along as fast as, as he's wanted. Yeah, but but John, this is year two, dude. That's like, exactly what. I'm, it's not a contract year. This is not a contract year for him. It's it's crazy. I I it doesn't make sense. And you know, when you look at it, like what can he even have like cut, like gone to them and said like, oh, I, you better give me the ball or else. Like that's he, that's my question. What wait, what is the conversation? I want to be used better. But I would with you. I want a guaranteed five catches a game. Like what the fuck is what? Like what is this? Like what did he exactly did he want to happen here? I, I think it's all about usage. It's all about the offense. How Lafleur is running it. The routes right. he's running. I, I think that's what he's unhappy with, and he doesn't see anything changing, even with Zach coming back. And that's why he reacted the way he did. I, Cl- clear, clearly, this isn't like the first time they've had this conversation. Clearly, I mean, they they had to have talked about it at some point last year or a few weeks ago. I mean, it, t- for him to just go from zero to a hundred like this and request a trade, like this has got to be something that's been lingering. You would think. But like the my question is like in a way like who do you kind of think you are like it, that exactly. the offense I hear that I really hear that. around you it's not like when he came out the draft Elijah Moore was was supposed to be the best guy there was five receivers drafted above him yep you know I, I and I and I love Elijah I'm a big fan of his I, I I've talked on and on about how how much I I, I think he can be great and and I still believe that but I, in, in a way it's like you got to be patient with this stuff you know. And I think where I was watching SNY, Bart Scott's talking about, you know, you can't be talking to the people in your little circle, telling, filling up your head with all this stuff. Go talk to a former receiver. Go talk to people who was in the NFL and deal with this stuff. There's ups and there's downs. You're not going to always be amazing. And it's like you you haven't even reached a point in your career where you've played that well to to to, to warrant this stuff. You know, the guy, exactly. he's had one game over yeah. 100 yards receiving. Like, it's not like the, the production. He, he couldn't even bring down a couple of those 50-50 balls the last few weeks, so. He, I just, it, it's so infuriating to see because the team's been doing well and you want to be able to talk about, and like, I see, I, I, I have class, so I can't even come in to talk on like Tuesdays and I, I, I miss all the conversations where we're doing a great time. And the day I have a day off, I now have to fucking talk about some bullshit. But dude, that's it's, the team. But, but that's all Jeff fans. Like, dude, like every Jeff and I've talked to over the last three weeks has been so excited, man. We're all so excited about Sundays now. We're looking forward to football. We're excited about all these different things. And then, like, every mess I – mean, my phone's blown up left and right. Everybody's like, fuck this guy. Like, this is the last thing this team needs right now. It's like you're winning football games. Like, you were, like he was brought here to help change the culture and build and go forward. They're now winning, and now you want out because it's about you? I, I just I just can't respect it. And, Crazy, and man. The, the Twitter shit just be, makes it me just question, like, everything. Like, it, it seems so fake. It, like, reading back the tweets – where, you know, it, it, it's always, always the guys who talk the most about, I love my teammates, my teammates, yep. it's that I ride for them. I don't care how I think. It's always those guys who are the same ones who turn around and be like, I want out. I'm not getting the ball enough. Yep. I, I, I don't like this. I, I can't be here. And it, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, I, I, the Mims thing, right? At least in Mims' case, he can't touch the field. <laughs> like, he has a reason to ask out. Elijah yep. Moore had, He's played the most snaps, right? The thing is, that's also a thing that, that I don't like. And Mims has still handled it better of than Moore. All the receivers, yep. he's played the most snaps. You know, and you haven't gotten the target so far, but you'd expect that they'll come sooner or later. Bingo. It's not like you're not running routes. Yep. It, it, it's not like you haven't touched a few. Like, you, you go off to the sideline and you're gone. Like, in week one, when Garrett Wilson, we were sitting there, like, well, where's Garrett Wilson at? It, it, he plays not the most. He plays the most. I I don't yep. get it. He plays more. He, he plays more snaps than Brees. He plays more more snaps than all yep. the running backs. He plays more snaps than all the other wide receivers. He plays more snaps than the tight ends. Only the fucking offensive line and the quarterback play more than him. Dude, I, it's wild, dude. It's wild. I I just like I'm so disappointed, man, because I just thought he like like you you like you want to believe in these guys. You think they're different. Like this guy's part of our answer going forward. Like that you think him, Garrett Wilson, these are like him, Brees Hall, Michael Carter, like that's our group going forward. 
and here we are. It's just I, like I'm, I'm disappointed at more, but at the same time, I mean, solid Douglas, like this whole new regime, like part of their job is still to get players to buy in and keep them happy. Yep. And so if this has been a situation that's been lingering, what have they done over the past few weeks to, to try to rectify it and not allow it to get to this point? So it, it, it sucks all the way around. Yeah. And, and I, that's why I saying like, I, I get that when I was defending him, it's like, look, as a player, you know, when you're, you're in a year on target to not even have what, like 700 yards, that, that, that stuff in a few years, you could, I mean, you comes back where the team looks at him like, well, in year two, you really didn't have any much production. So how can we trust to pay you? Right. Yeah. But my thing is it's happening way too early. All, all yeah. I, I, I don't know what, obviously we yeah. don't know what's been said behind closed doors, but for all this stuff to happen so fast, it, it, it's insane. Like yeah. you don't have any leverage. Nope. Where what is the trade request actually doing for you right now? Yep. Well, it's just it's just letting know it's letting teams know that he wants out. So if they were it's probably lowering his value, if they if they're inclined to make an offer, they could be more aggressive up making the offer because now it's a distraction. Now the Jets they they're gonna want to get him out of here now. There's no fuck. I mean, you don't keep him around now. It's like stay home. I don't think he goes. To be honest, I think he ends up staying. You what have him inactive every week sitting next to Mims? Well, for one reason, and then they try to say trade deadline passes. Yeah. You, you 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 have to play. It's not like it's not like he, it's not like you could trade him anytime in the season. Well, his trade value would just—he's got no leverage right now. He has yeah. no leverage. I would yeah. tell him you're not getting traded, so we'll work it out, suck it up, and play. Like honestly, unless yeah, but to me, I'm but, not but, it, but if he's a distraction though, I mean, if he's not giving effort on his routes, if they do play him, I mean, you can well, potentially if, open up a whole new can of worms. If, he, that, if so. he starts going out and not showing effort on his routes, and they like that, just hurting himself because like he's not going to get paid like that. Like in in, in this in the big scheme of things, like like. If Elijah were to actually start coming out and just fully dog everything and just not give a fuck, not play, that's not the way to get yourself traded to another right. team. Like you haven't pro- played at that high right. level yet. You yep. can't just do that. Antonio Brown can do that. Oh yeah, now a team he trading for him is your tra- a team trading for him is based on potential, what you think he can be, because he hasn't shown you what he can be yet. But I'm not gonna if I'm a if I'm a coach for another team, if I see a player, well the, the trade quest is one thing, but if I see a player playing and not giving effort, I'm not gonna waste a pick on that. Like yeah, that, that's, that's fair. That's that, no one's gonna fair. do that. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about like more and more Snoopy. I agree. I, I've seen that with, with, with him. Yeah. Not, we, we all you, seen. You've that. got questionable effort and now questionable character. How much are you giving up for that? And, and not a lot. And not a lot of productivity. It's not yep. like he's had a thousand yard season. And that's the thing. Like, with, I'm I'm not oh, just shit. gonna. And it, it's a rough situation to be in for the Jets because you don't want to just one trade him away for for peanuts. I think I. I'd want ideally you're not going to get a first probably, but I'd like to get a first. Yeah. I'd like to get at least a second and something else back. Dude, if I get if they offer me a second, gone. Take Just care. Adios. That's it. Yep. Which team? Though? I don't give a. F- I mean, I, like the Packers. Get them out of the AFC. Go to the NFC. Second round pick. Adios. I would I would probably ask for something else as, as well because I mean we took them with a high second rounder, so you do want to recoup the value back. Alan Lazard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll. <laughs> So Sauce can bully him in practice. <laughs> um, but like, so it's hard for the Jets because if, if Joe Douglas just instantly trades him, it's like then then you know that players with no leverage can just walk into your walk up to your GM and say, "Get me out of here," and he'll be like, "Okay, I'll do that's, that." That's that's pro sports these days. But the problem you have it's tough for the Jets because he's one of their young nucleus. He's one of the second year players Mostly. now. All these guys are watching. Everybody in that locker room is watching. Mims wanted out. Nothing's happened. He's been sitting there. All right. Now Elijah wants out. How do they handle this? The whole Jamal Adams thing, that was all about money. That was pure money. That was a money grab. And that was like, you know what? You had to go. Sam Darnold sucked. We know he had to go. But now Elijah's got potential, and this is about how do the Jets handle it? And they're all watching. That whole fucking locker room is watching this shit. And if you like, if you if you fully change his role, I feel like that might lose your respect as well. Because the other players are sitting there looking at you like, the fuck? How, how's this happening? We, we went from, you know, like, I get this difference between him just getting more targets as the season goes on and, and, yep. and defensive change, right? Because, like, last week, freaking Jair Alexander was following uh, Garrett Wilson the yep. whole way. The Packers yep. watched our film, I guess, and they said, that's the guy we want you to be on, and they he followed him the whole way. So, in future weeks, you would think that that kind of stuff happening would open up Elijah Moore for, for more targets. Exactly. When you go into – when you go into – to say you, you tell him to come back, right, and you go into team meetings and say, all right, so right now on these plays, we want to target Elijah on these – if I'm the other receivers in this room, I'm looking at this shit like, yep. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what Elijah Vera Tucker's thinking right now? He'd be like, "Bro, this guy's worried about his targets, so we can get the most money." This guy's been bouncing around the offensive line left and right, and playing all over the place, and like he can't even solidify a spot in the weekend. Week up base, and he's not even. He's just all right. That's fine. 
just play, he's just playing. Uh, unless they see his talent and they they see his point, and they're like, yo, this is a guy that's got some skill who could actually help our offense get to that next level. Why aren't we using him in X, Y, or Z ways? I, don't, I, I, don't I just don't get it. I, I don't get it. I, I think it, it was way too early. Uh, I, I don't like the move. I, you, you know, know, eventually players are going to start putting their opinions out there, it's whether coming. it's whether it's liking tweets or posts. Like, it's coming. I understand the story's going to come out. It's I understand come the, out. Frustration. the give frustration. It, frustration. Give it give it forty eight hours. You're going to start seeing who's taking whose side. And you know, I know what's going to happen is two th- things are going to happen because right now Elijah Moore is getting pounded in the media, pounded by all the fans. Everybody's pounded on him. Sooner or later, stories will be leaked by his agent and mm-hmm. by him, and they'll get out. Oh, the other side, the other side of the story is going to start coming out, and it's like, oh wait a minute, what does that mean? Gu- I guarantee it. Yep. Always, the, does. The, Always the does. awkwardness with the team potentially. Like, I mean, everyone, you know, say, I love my teammates, and the teammates are going to say to the media, Oh, we love Elijah, we want him back. Right. But then if he's actually trying to really get out of there, you're going to have to burn some bridges to do that. Yep. And that locker room is, is going to be real awkward. Like, like, that's the reason why I think he couldn't play this weekend because this trade comes out Thursday. He's supposed to walk in there tomorrow. And then everyone's just yeah. looking at him like, all right, we all cool. No, you know? if you have that, you know, one for all kind of thing, like we're all we're all in this together. You're obviously not in together. You want out. You want out. We're letting you out. You're not part of this. We're not. You're not part of our winning and losing on a Sunday. You're not. You, you can't play. So, good talking to you, man. Nice seeing you guys. Good talking, man. Subject, Wished it was on better terms. Have a yeah. good night, man. Yeah, you guys have a great night. You too. You too. It's funny because he John was one of my favorite callers, man, because he knows his shit inside out and backwards. But the funny thing is, if you miss our Tuesday shows and you come on, you see Elmo saying hi, and we're yeah, like, bro, you better say hi this. to him. And he's like, and then like everybody, like we're all pissed off and annoyed by the situation. Everybody's commenting on the curtains and all this other shit. <laughs> it's outstanding, man. I love it. They were all over those curtains. It's up. Go to Steve. What's up, man? Hey, guys. How you doing? What's up, well, Steve? How you doing, man? Could be better, obviously. Uh, <laughs> but... Um... Look, the Jets, in my, my my initial reaction is like everybody else. You, you have a visceral reaction and you're angry at Moore. Why is he doing this? Things are going well. Um, but as everybody has said at least once or twice, um, we don't know the full story, maybe. And, you know, the Jets haven't exactly earned the benefit of the doubt, even this current regime. But let's operate under the hypothetical Better that... say hi to Elmo. Uh, that hi Elmo. <laughs> Let's operate under the hypothetical that um, he um, isn't happy with his touches and 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 wants more. Okay, if he were a wide receiver that has been proven over, um, and has played years and has had thousand yard seasons, and he wants his money, and this can mean a difference between tens of millions of dollars, and he's not being used correctly. I understand that, but obviously. This is his second year, and he's coming off of an injury in his first year. So it's just bizarre. But in trying to think what he could be thinking and what could be being fed to him by others is um, you have in 2024, especially with the new revenue coming from Amazon, um, you have a high expected spike in the salary cap, okay? And he could be thinking, look, down the road, what's the outlook? This team is leaning heavily on the run game. Fuck yeah, all that, dude. I don't even want to hear. I don't want to get – fuck that about his contract well, two I'm, years I'm from not, now. I'm not just like, listen, dude, I'm but just the, the, the thing is this. It's six games into the season. We don't even right. know what this fucking offense is going to be in five weeks. It could be forced to be pass heavy because everybody's stopping the run. Like, dude, this is if this is his stance, you, you do this trade request at the end of this season when you're not getting the numbers that you want. Requesting this now is just amateur hour horseshit. Seriously, dude, it's six games. That's under the your quarterback just came that, back for three, and you're winning. That that's under the hypothetical that this is it. Um, but either way, we do know that he's not too bright because even if he were justified in asking for a trade because we don't know something, by all reports, if the sources are correct. The Jets were taken by surprise. And now what you've done is you've taken away some leverage and you've lessened your value by doing this in public like this. That's all I mean, you've done. Well, that's – I mean, that's fair. May, yeah. maybe you lessened the value, but I think if anything, you put the league on notice that, you know what, he now he wants to trade. But then you can you could expedite things and say, listen, he's obviously available for trade. We're going to make a move, but you give us our best offer and don't waste our time. Like sometimes you could slow play for two or three weeks, four weeks. I think at this point it's going to be a distraction where it's like, listen, 
what's your best offer next caller and then and just find a way to get him out of here and and that's it like that's this can't string out for a month or two months man unless but, unless they repair it quickly how do you repair it God. What do you, yeah. how do you how, how, how do you repair it? Please I, I, come I'm, back to our team. We're gonna throw you the ball ten times a game. I'm just saying it's not like it's again. I know different situations with Debo. I mean, somebody commented before about Kevin Durant with the Nets. It's it's not uncommon that you see a superstar ask for a trade, and then over time the situation gets solved out. Again, during the season, it's a lot more difficult. But Steve, what, what if, is, if, what is, if they're gonna if they're gonna what is there to uh, where is there to solve? This isn't the superstar. Yeah, so, this is the guy that has like three one thousand yard seasons. Convincing him, catches. convincing him that the numbers are going to come. I mean, I, I don't come know. Come on, dude. I, I mean, I, look, this is this is ridiculous. We don't know we, what the numbers are so going wait, to so, come. Right, so it's not. It, so then, basically, we're saying it's not really about winning. It's not about the team. We got to we got to make you happy by guaranteeing you have what a hundred yards a game. But it isn't about that though. A, a player that's talented getting the ball in his hands should help you win. I understand that right. we're winning right now, but when you start facing better teams, I mean, but, Elijah Moore, he's got to be a weapon that's got to be fed. I mean, like we've, we've been praising this guy for a year and a half. We've been, we've been defending him the last few right. weeks saying you need to get the ball in his hands. Have, so have we faced that situation yet? They won three games in a row. Well, if honestly, prime time, if honestly, I'm, this weekend, I'm, I wrote down my fucking game preview already. That was part of my preview. Like, you know what? They're going to start attacking the line of scrimmage, run blitzing it, and we're gonna have to throw the football. I didn't think that. I thought next week against the Patriots. But that, but this, this the next week, couple weeks is gonna be another ground and pound. The next couple of weeks is gonna be where you're gonna have to start using your, your passing game a lot more. You're That's probably to. why he's pissed off. Game plan this week is probably the same as, as it was last week. Uh, I mean, this is just all ground. This pound. is some nonsense, man. Steve, what what is what is the the minimum value of taking a trade for Elijah Moore right now? Um, a third rounder. And the reason I say that is because I don't think you're going to do better because he, he hasn't proven anything. Him sitting on the bench at this point will not up his value. And quite honestly, because um, a lot of teams that are con with high expectations that haven't done well might still think that they're in it and one piece away, you might get the highest price sooner rather than later, especially if you look at a team like the Green Bay Packers, for yeah. example, in a division that's not the strongest. I know that the Vikings are five and one, but they're not the strongest five and one team I've ever seen. Um, so you might be a lot of teams who still think that they're in it and they have um, expensive quarterbacks to satisfy. Yeah. They, you could, you might get a, a a good pick. And to me, yes, I want something higher for his talent, but um, I don't know how many teams are lining up for first and second rounders for a guy who's going to publicly yeah. complain like this after no production. Bingo. Yeah, I don't think I don't think a first rounder is even feasible at all. No, I, 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 I'm hoping for a second first. rounder, but I mean, it's just, I mean, now it's like, I think right now it's probably, I mean, this, I can't believe we're having this conversation. I just can't believe mm -hmm. it. I'm just yeah. so annoyed by this. It's but that, just, that's the worst thing. You should we sh should be enjoying this and and you know just looking forward to next week. Anything can happen. It's just optimism. How, how when was last time that you know this has happened? So oh, what can you do? Thanks, Thank guys. You. Though I appreciate the time. <laughs> Have a good night, man. Good night. You know, and it's 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 weird because like I try to come in calm, right? We talked before this. I was trying to be calm, mm -hmm. like all right. And the more I think about, it, the fucking anger I get. Like seriously, like, I'm I'm angry shit about this. It's just you guys are all starting to convince me to get a little bit more pissed at more. It's just I just I, I was just, trying to stay neutral just until like all the facts came out because like like we talked about before, you know that within more 48 story. hours there's going to be a lot more that starts to yeah, come out. Of course, players are going to start to take sides. Uh, details are going to be leaked. So I'm trying not to completely form an opinion, but it, it's hard to ignore being four and two on a three game winning streak. The team's having success. And you choose now to go out and do this. It's hard to defend that. And the thing is, it's just like you keep saying, like, when they have the talk, like, okay, we're, you, the conversation is pretty simple if you're Mike LaFleur and Salah. Okay, you know, as the season goes on, we're going to have to open up our offense. And do, well, there's going to be other opportunities. you got to stay patient. We're six weeks in. Yeah. Everything is evolving. Okay, that's it. Like, that, like probably, what, like, yeah. what are you, what are you going to sign a contract? Dear Elijah, we're going to guarantee you five catches a week and 45 yards. Like, what the fuck are we doing here? Right? Uh, well, again, that's why I think it's less about targets. It's all about usage. He, he doesn't like how LaFleur is using him in this offense, right or wrong. Only, only this thing could piss me off when we're yep. fucking four and two. <laughs> Seriously. What's up, Blade? Hey, yeah, how's it going? Up, Sorry, I was too <laughs> Drink up, man. We, we can wait for the drink. We're good with that. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, drinking like, Arizona iced tea. Like a down hey, I didn't know he was. First, I want to say hi, Elmo. 
There you go. Well Head done. You beat him. Yeah. There you go. And I didn't know we were going live tonight, so I've had a few too many. We didn't so. either. I didn't know we were going live either. I had a, I had a big primetime. Primetime had a guest appearance on Jose's show. I'm like, you're not going on Jose's show, man. You're off. <laughs> Jose's going to kill me. <laughs> That's okay, problem. so I want to fucking tell you guys what's happening. All right. Um, I think Rich Shemini just fucking – sorry, but put a spark in Elijah Moore's mind, right? It got him thinking about, like, how he's not getting touches and stuff. And then, he had a conversation with, then he had a conversation with Salah. And I don't think that conversation went well. I, I think, think that's why that's why he's mad. No, bro, I gotta cut you off, man. I think it's nothing to do with Rich Samini. This has been fashion for two weeks. So this has been going well, yeah, on for what, a the weeks last already. two weeks. The last two weeks. But I think Samini's you, thing was just the icing on the cake where Elijah was like, you know what? Yeah. If you exactly. if you go by the AJ Brown blueprint, this is the blueprint to do it. You start on social media, then your agent requests a trade, and then you get out. Samini, Samini's just prospering off this because he lives off this shit. <laughs> Samini was but right today, though. In fairness, said, everybody was ripping him when he put out the initial report that it was, you know, personal matters. It, it, it didn't have anything oh, to do with you know, his usage. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and then eventually everybody corrected it. So, I mean, he initially. Yeah. I mean, I mean, any any on. person with a brain this knew it was a family fault. matter. I mean, it was that's the yeah, right. that's trying to lie about it was comical. But I don't think it. I think, uh, like like you said, Samini was icing on the cake. If Samini wouldn't have tweeted, I don't think we'd be here right now. Like we wouldn't be here yet. Like, two. um, I don't think so, man. I think it was already. I think he progress. used that as an, as an excuse to not look as bad, and then I think Sala went and whether, talked. Whether to him whether it was Samini or somebody else, though, I mean, eventually, when the media asks about eventually. Elijah Moore not being at practice, I mean, something's going to come out eventually. Yeah. Right. I know he wasn't but there today. Whether I think Sala went or somebody else. It, you know, Sala went and talked to him, and that didn't go well. Like Elijah Moore got offended about what Sala said. He didn't. He didn't baby him and say, uh, "Hey, we're going to give you ten targets." You know, if if he would have if he would have been catching three balls for fifty yards, he it wouldn't be a deal at all right now. But that's not even, like he uh, was. Yeah, I mean, the first three, the first uh, five weeks or whatever. But the thing, what I don't understand, if it's been festering for two weeks, it's not like they're a high flying offense and Garrett Wilson's right. having breakout games and like everybody's catching the ball but him. Nobody's catching yeah. the fucking ball, right? Yeah. But if you remember um, this What's summer, with Zach? I don't know. Elijah Moore, I follow him on Instagram. I'm sure you guys do too. He retweeted a thing that says, um, if I was used like Cooper Cup in our offense, I'd be an MVP. And then if you look at Berrios, he got that, end around. that way. He wants he wants like end arounds. He wants he wants that kind of stuff. Like he just wants his touches. And he sees all these other guys scoring and like he's pissed off, and then Rich Samini tweets that, and then he has a bad conversation with Sala, and then I like, get the I frustration, just... but voicing it at six the time games. that he's doing it when the team's right. winning, when they're four and two after six games in his second year, when he hasn't really right. produced in the limited amount of reps that he has had, it just it looks right. terrible. Right, looks and terrible. I agree with you, Kevin. Like, if if I was in charge, I'm telling him you're sitting out. Like, yep. You you are sitting the rest of the season. I'm not trading you. I'm not. I don't care. But no, I, I say no. You just say, listen. You know what? We we recognize your trade request. That's yeah. fine. You're now inactive every Sunday until we get what you want. So you worry about your Whoa, targets. Now you're getting, now you're getting even far. less. Too far. I feel not like for me, it's not. Fuck that, dude. If he <laughs> wants out, I'm not going to be a part of my team. That's it. I'm like you, you're you're obviously not vested. You have not bought into our program. You don't want to be a part of it. You want out. Cool. You're now inactive. And unless we get our best value, you're gonna be shitting yeah. every week next to Bryce Hall and fucking Denzel Mims. So what if you just if he comes out and gets let's say six targets this weekend, don't you think it's all fixed? Yeah, but then but then it looks stupid though. If like Ow, now you're, you're, you're gonna you're He's gonna a force, maker. You know we, what, what, what is Garrett Wilson? What is Corey Davis? What is Barrios? What is Uzama? Right. What is Conklin? Now the world evolves around Elijah Moore. He's the only fucking guy on the team we gotta make happy now. You run but we, your offense. The guy we have, open gets the ball. We Love have been that. talking all summer about how he's our wide receiver one, how he's a breakout star, and he's been hearing that, and he feels no. like he feels like he has to live up to that. It's six you know? games. I know. I I get what you're saying. It's only six games, and I agree with you. But I think if he if he's willing to dress, I would dress him and have five plays where oh, he's man. my go-to target. Nope. 
So then, so what? So then what? So then you. So then this is the problem with that. So Elijah Moore yeah. says, "I need to have this." Okay, now we're gonna get you the ball five times. Then Garrett Wilson's gonna be like, "Yo, bro, that's fucked up. I want ten catches." Then Uzama says, "Well, I better get my four. And then what do you have? You have a fucking laundry list of like a, a line, a line of what what you owe everybody every week. That's how you have but your Garrett, offense for your quarterback. Garrett Wilson has had his breakout game. Uz- one. Uh, Tyler Conklin's had his chances. Wait, he fumbled, wait, let me, let me Blade, fumbled that Okay, listen. Blade, Garrett Wilson's used to a high-flying offense. Last week right. he had what? Two catches? I mean, how many? Yeah. Did he have two? Well, so yeah. you think he he's happy too. with his numbers right now? Fuck well, no. He's also but had drops like two of them. He has his weeks. targets. Oh, come on, man. Nobody's having monster games as receivers right now. If They're all anybody, getting targeted, though. The They're only guy that's put up numbers right now is Corey fair. Davis. Right. That's it. But he's getting targets every week, though. If Elijah Moore was getting if Elijah Moore was getting like five targets, like two catches for 25 yards, he'd be happy. Not not like last week was one target for 11 yards, one target and one catch for 11 yards. This week was one target for negative and, yards. And, and, and but you know why that, do you know why that is? Because he's a playmaker? I don't know. No, because they're effectively running the fucking football. That's why. If your offense right. can't be stopped running the ball, why am I going to pass when I don't have to? Or but if you throw it, if you throw more, it, or your, or your passing game could be more effective if you use him differently. Or if you throw, if you throw it, you know what we'll do when the, when the Jets are blowing out the Packers and blowing out the Dolphins, we'll just throw we'll get the garbage time yards to Elijah Moore. So they're going to be meaningless yards, but at least he gets his catches. Then Does that make him happy. I, 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 I don't get how we go from one week complaining about the way he's being used. Oh, he's only going vertical. Like this is a shitty way to use a, a talented playmaker. To now, yeah. oh fuck him, like. I, that, that, but, again, that's that's why, him, but this doesn't make any but, sense to me. Like now, but, now Blade, Blade, but Blade just said, that, give that's him two why I'm not 25 yards. Okay, then in garbage time, prime time, when nobody gives two shits, I, I instead of doing that running play. I don't play, get why we keep going back to oh, he needs this number of targets and this number of yards. That's not what it's about. It's about how he's being used and the routes he's running. Okay, so then, okay, so right. prime time. So I then, agree. okay, to your, to your point then. So if we line him up in the slot and he still gets zero targets, do you feel better? Is he going to be happy about that? Yeah, he would have nothing no. to complain about then if he's being used the right way to his skill set. What if you give him an end around? Give him an end around or like a jet sweep? Or... We, we, we've said for months he's a talented player that needs the ball in his hands, and they're not putting the ball in his hands. I, I get right. it. It's only six After games. Six I get it. It's games. only six games. I understand that. So, talent, right. talent, though. so that it and you say the conversation is okay, we're working our best to get you more involved. We're going to change it as Zach evolves, as the offense evolves. It's six okay. fucking games. But clearly Only three that conversation didn't, I mean, All right. whatever conversation they had, it led to him requesting a trade. So, I mean, clearly whatever message they were trying to articulate to him didn't go well. Exactly. Yeah. So, Took his so I think, home. I think, uh, Tyson, you were spot on right there, but like we're, we're missing it a little bit on each side. So I think he's upset with how, how he's used. And I think Sala and LaFleur didn't come and say, Hey, this is how we're going to use you and how we're going to change it. And, this is why, and uh, he was upset well, that, with that. that. Well, that would be well, that would be a fault of Sal on the floor if they're that narrow. Right. And just, you know what? We think we're using the best and, way. We're not going to change anything. And is that not out of the possibility when you have Denzel right. Mims sitting right now inactive, requesting the same goddamn trade? Is that right. not a possibility? I, That's why yeah, I'm not taking sides yet. There's too much shit that uh, we don't know to to call Elijah Moore a piece of shit, a, a diva, yeah, a exactly. selfish player. Like, I'm I'm waiting until more shit comes out because th- this looks fucked up on all sides. If I think it's it's Moore's fault for doing it this fucking early, like, dude, let's give it a minute. Throw I 100 percent agree with you on that, Tyson. Like, let's give it a minute. Can't and then I think it's Sala and Lafleur, like, not explaining to him and making him feel good, like, like or her, whatever the fuck you want to call him. You know what I mean? He's being a bitch about it. <laughs> like, giving it a minute. Like, but just see, but see, but the thing is though, it's like. Sala and Flor- LaFleur come off like they're very open minded. I mean, they just listen to Will yeah, Parks on Sunday. Off, and they, but no, but they just listen to Will Parks on Sunday and change their game plan of special teams to fucking get up a block punt. So they seem like they, the players have a lot of they have a lot of interaction. They they said they're really open minded. They change, they listen to Quentin Williams. They listen to players, dude. So right. it's just a matter of did he did he did he not hear what he wanted to hear, or is there something deeper where it was like this is more than what we're all thinking is. Right. Well, I think he values himself as a superstar, and he didn't get treated like a fucking superstar. You know what I mean? But he hasn't played like a superstar. Right. But, I mean, if you were him, like... Well, just if those I, kind if of... I was him, I'd still be on the team. I wouldn't be asked for a trade request. I'd just shut my mouth yeah. and play football. 
Because you're a diehard Jets fan. But if no, I'm just, I'm just, was, this is just a person, kind of person I am, I'm a team guy. Like, all right, it's six games in. I'm not going to be an asshole. But those kind of egos, like, they just need their numbers. You know what I mean? Like, you just I, – I see what you're saying. But, like, I, I disagree with trading him. Like, let's just let him sit it out and, like – I say play him this week and give him no, his can't. targets. Can't. You don't think he plays? Nope. Nope. How can you play him when he wants out? I bet he plays. Dude, that I would be so pissed that Jets just missed a full weekend. day of practice. We don't even know if he's going to be at practice tomorrow. Yeah. And, he's, and he doesn't want to be a part. Like, like to me, it's like you have a team that's – you have all – You have wait, hold on a second, though. You have Dwayne Brown playing with an injured shoulder – playing that way. You have AVT rolling all over the fucking field, playing every different position. You have all these guys doing these things, and this guy yeah. wants out, you want to play him? Like, no, you're not You're not part of the program now, bro. You're out. You're inactive. I I'm said, That's it. so I'm there's done. two out. There's two extremes. Either you sit him, and yep. you go the inactive route the whole way, which solves fucking nothing, right? Or you give him a few targets. You throw a few fucking bones his way, and he goes. There's yeah. that, Those are the only two. Nope. You don't suit him up and do the I'm same not feeding thing. Them shit. I'm feeding him his walking papers. But there's even, even the I'll agree with Tyson on that. Do we not agree on that? You can't play, dude. Blade, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, boy. <laughs> My boy was lit. <laughs> All right. Was we will go to Matt. Matt, what's up, man? Well, I've had better days. You know, <laughs> this, was the, this was the last thing I expected, to be totally honest. <clears throat> yeah. You and, you and all of us. But so my take is, I think there, there's got to be more than this to the story. It's not a one-time thing. This has to have been some kind of a buildup yeah. mm -hmm. over the last, you know, multiple weeks. But I don't blame. Hey, Elmo. <laughs> Smart move, Matt. Yeah, I don't. Well, I saw it right away. I'm like, better do it now before I forget. So yep. I think the bottom line is, you absolutely cannot play him Sunday. Yep. That I sends agree. the wrong kind of message to your team. That's Sala caving into his players. If you are the player's coach, you hold your guys accountable. We talk about culture. We talk about accountability. That's how you do it right there. You are not – there is no I in team. I hate to be cliched, but that's the ultimate it's true. Uh, statement to go by. And at the same time, as far as trading him, I'll send him to a quarterback uh, – wide receiver wasteland. Send him to the Bears. <laughs> there you so, go. <laughs> dead, dead serious because – like Gase did with uh, Jarvis Landry? Yeah, yep. trade straight up. Give us Roquan Smith for Elijah Moore. Oh, why would they do that? I would do that in a heartbeat. Shit. I'd do that tomorrow. I would love that. Shit. I would love that. Yeah. Do I that would throw maybe. in a second round pick to make that I'd happen. Drive, I'd drive him to the airport. Throw Elijah in, Moore in a two? For, you got to throw Smith? in a third round pick, so be it. Um, I'm down. I would do that. I just I don't see a way where he should be on this team going into the foreseeable future. But at the same time, the reality is – we're playing against teams that have not been able to stop the run. You look, we yep. got Denver, number one pass defense. Yep. Belichick thrives on beating young quarterbacks and taking away what you do best, which will likely be the run game. And then we got the Bills, who I don't even think we're on the same stratosphere as nope. prove me wrong. But he could be used there, but you absolutely cannot play him this this week. It's nope. just it'd be unacceptable if they do. Don't even fly to Denver. Stay here. Stay home. Yeah, you're good. Be like enjoy enjoy the smell of New Jersey yep. when we go to uh, you know, when we fly to Denver. <laughs> to me, it's just a matter of now. It's like how it's just what what's the reaction of the locker room going to be? Because I, I'm telling you, dude, if this divides the locker room, that's going to be a fucking enormous problem. Now it's a distraction, first of all. But what's the locker room thinking? Are they on the team side or are they on Elijah side? And then it's just like, all right. And then how long does this drag out? It's, it's a distraction, dude. It's a young yeah, team that has so much positivity around them. And like I, I'm, I still can't believe we're dealing with this right now. I, I genuinely can't. Like, no, timing this is, is like a happy time to be a Jets fan. And now we're all angry again. T timing is everything. And if I'm, if I'm a guy like Dwayne Brown who could have taken the money and ran, bingo. But I'm playing through it, and I see a guy complaining about his lack of uh, being featured. You know, I, I'd certainly have a players' meeting and say, hey man, that that's not the way to go about this. I've been around the block. I've been on losing teams. And look, Elijah Moore, he doesn't know about winning. His record at Ole Miss sucked when he was playing there. Yep. So I don't think he knows what winning is like. He doesn't. He doesn't know what being a superstar is like in the NFL. Cause he hasn't done that either. No, exactly. It's crazy. So what is? So what is the minimum that you would take from? Like, what's what's the trade value? You think like a realistic where it's like I don't think a first rounder is even an option. Oh God, no, no, no. 
But is it is a second is a second too much? Is a third? Like what are we looking at? I think once you get to the trade deadline and teams become more and more desperate, um, because we still got a few weeks to go. I think it's week nine when yep. the deadline is, but second round pick at bare minimum. Maybe you have to throw in like a, a day three pick to add equivalency to a second rounder, but anything less, you gotta figure out and and fit and work this out on your own because anything less than that you're just giving away away for pennies on the dollar yeah which is tough because then that's something that as a team you can't do that but it's like i don't know what a, what an honest value is for him like we like we have that the vision of him was all his potential like what we think he could be like we like, like everybody's saying that this is gonna be we talked about it this is gonna be his breakout year this year he's gonna be the superstar we always wanted all this shit but that's a potential that we thought and he hasn't done that yet. So do other teams have that same feeling about him? Like the Packers saw him firsthand, you know, in practice, you know, the, you know, the Falcons did other teams. So maybe they have like insight. The Eagles did. Well, not only hasn't he produced, but now he's a distraction too. So. He's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Double it's, problem. It sucks, but th- th- I don't want to say it's a good problem to have when you have multiple weapons, but this is something to be expected when you have a run first offense. Look at the Shanahan right. offense with Jimmy G. It's a lot of it's run based. You know, they'll do a lot of screens. And Elijah Moore's got a point. I don't think they've utilized him in the best way. You know, they could use him a lot more in bubble screens, um, some slant routes, put him on the inside. So I think there's plenty of blame to go around for all parties. But the way he's been handling it is absolutely the the worst way to do it. The worst way to do it at the worst time to do it when your team's winning three in a row and you're literally the talk of the town. Like now, like now, no matter what you're doing, you, you can get your endorsements, you can get your sponsorships, like you're gonna get appearances everywhere. Like you do any little thing, fans are gonna come out and support you. Like I'm, I'm sure right now, before all this bullshit, if Elijah Moore did an autograph sign in New York City, fans would go see him and say hi and what's up and pay 30, 40, or whatever, 100 bucks. Did it over the summer. He was in New somewhere yeah. in New Jersey over the summer. No, same, like, even now, even with his limited numbers now, I'm sure if he did an autograph signing somewhere, Jet fans would line up and pay, and they're still buying all this stuff because they still like him, they still believe in him. So, so Elmo, to answer your question, I'm in my basement, and there's not the only singular light. Yeah, uh, you never, me. there's one right above me. Don't worry about the chat, dude. They're they're everybody's angry. Tonight, so don't worry about them. You. No, everyone's they got to we got a right to be angry because this is the kind of shit that just it yeah, can is- send things south in a hurry, especially with a game against Denver where. I don't know what's going to happen. I think that's going to be a kind of game where first one to score 17 wins. Shit, it could be 14. But the other thing, too, is just there. I, I keep saying this because this is a very young team, dude. Very young. All first and second year players. You have some veterans, but they're, their locker room is watching now. How does the Jets handle this? How do they handle this? And if they if the locker room is not buying in, there could be something more behind the scenes. Like, you know what? If they take Elijah's side, then we got a bigger problem. Then you got a coach problem. You know what I mean? Like right now, we're all angry at Elijah Moore. We think it's selfish. He's a diva. All this shit. If something else happens behind the scenes and the the, the, the players take Elijah's side, we got a fucking problem, dude. We and they did just show. Problem. I saw on Twitter Zach Wilson was having dinner with the O line tonight on his uh, Instagram. Good. So I guarantee you that's going to come up in conversation. Top of conversation. They all. Know. I'm sure they, that's they, all they're talking about. They, they all know. They know this has been going on for two weeks, three weeks already. This has been happening for a while. So it's they probably know. I'm sure they're probably surprised it got to this point, but. This is they're all watching, dude. How are we here? <laughs> wow. Ridiculous. Matt, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. My pleasure as always. Have a good night. Good talking to you, man. Thanks, you too. All right. All right. Real quick. All right. Sean, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Tyson? Long um, time no talk. Yeah, so it's like what's so weird is and everyone said this, like second year player doing this kind of thing is unprecedented. Yep. Like Either guys that have done this before, you know, they've proven themselves, they've established themselves in the yeah. league, and then they did this kind of thing. I think you mentioned DK. DK didn't even do this kind of thing. He didn't request a trade. He didn't say anything on social media, and we gave him the deal, right? It's so weird. Hey, Elmo, what's up? Um, Second-year player, uh, I genuinely have no idea, like, why he would do this kind of thing. There's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. But obviously, right now, since it just happened, emotions are raw, so a lot of people – are obviously, and you know, justifiably so, are going to have a lot of strong feelings about it. I think realistically what's going to happen, <clears throat> the Jets are obviously going to chop them. Yep. Uh, the, the the Jets are going to chop them, but if they can't trade them before the trade deadline for at least a second. You think it lasts I mean, that long? Like, I don't think they're going to um, – I don't think – if they don't get at least a second rounder, yep. third, it's, it's like – Kind of maybe yeah. not sure, 
then what's going to happen is they try to put this under wraps. They try to stay very quiet about this. Either they make him inactive, or even if they don't want to do that and create more media noise and just keep him active and on the bench, then Fuck later that. On, I ain't wasting a roster spot on him. What are you nuts? If if he is inactive, see, he's got to be inactive. Dude. You can't have him. On, you can't have him on active on game day and say we're, we're not going to play you. He's inactive, dude. Don't waste the roster spot. Yeah, like no what way. I feel I might happen is he's inactive for like the next couple of weeks, and slowly, slowly, and and you can, and maybe they like give him a few targets. And by few, I mean like two to three. I don't think it'll happen, but this coaching staff, I don't but know if pull the trigger this quickly. But I, I, I'm going to blow up. So if, so is if the theory is he's not being used properly, that's what, that's what the, 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 the play is yeah. here. So then now, okay, now we're going to move you to where you, where you, not the team, where you think you should play better. Okay. And then what? So then it's like, okay, now we moved you there. What if he's still not getting the proper amount of catches in his eyes? Then now what? We have to say, okay, how many yards do you want each week? How many catches do you want each week? How much, like, you can't, like, dude. Like, we said he could be used differently. Like, I said the prime time last week, you know, Long some of those end arounds, instead of giving to Barrios, you can give him to Elijah Moore. But those are things that once you self-scout your offense, you're going to have to make changes. You're going to have to adapt. Defenses are now going to attack the Jets' offense differently. We know that we're now a ground-the-pound team. They're going to force you to beat them with, the, with, with your arm. Okay, answer Elijah Moore. But now it's not happening soon enough for him during a winning streak. Yeah, that's the thing. Like when your team is winning, that's the last thing that your team needs. And, you know, in terms of how like a lot of people have been saying, oh, his teammates are going to take sides and all this kind of stuff. I genuinely don't think that a thing like this, as big as it is, I don't think that it flips the switch on the locker room. Guys are off oh. a high right now. This team is young. Oh, this team shit, is... man. This... One, I 1,000% disagree. These Why guys are all boys, man. They're that, all close friends, man. I when totally you, get that. When you, like, listen, man, I like I, I coach an MMA gym, dude. We have, we have teams. We have fight teams. We have all kinds of teams. We have situations like this in gyms, man. It happens all across martial arts where you have some of those guys, they're just the me guys. They don't help out in sparring. They don't do this. You're that guy. And, dude, Everybody knows who these people are, and when something goes wrong, people are picking sides, dude. We are all a team, but people are picking sides. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's something if like if a coach does something fucked up to a, a fighter, everybody sides at the fighter. Yo, that's bullshit. Dude. I feel that. And that's successful teams, man. It's like top the top teams in the world have that, those kind of problems. That's true. Um, if you were to trade them, though, I would say like I just don't know if if you can't trade him before the November first deadline. I don't know how to elevate his value after this because if you keep him inactive, it's like his trade value is only going to go down because he's going to continue chirping on Twitter, or at the very least, he's not going to play any snaps. So yeah. your his trade value is going to tank even more. So if you trade him right now, like within the next two weeks or so, I would say the the Panthers are out of the question because they're rebuilding right now. Like this team is not going to be with them next see like they fired their head coach the team's going to get completely rebuilt even if the gm stays the same so they're not going to trade four players they're only going to have a fire sale especially, to trade coach, players. The, especially when the coach isn't even there they get to hire a new coach yeah exactly so it doesn't make sense for the panthers to acquire anyone right now especially when they just got rid of robbie anderson who pretty much did the same shit but like in the field yep. so they're not going to do that if there are teams that are desperate for a wide receiver obviously the packers are one um, Bears and Raiders also came to mind because Bears, I mean, they're, they're going to try to make Justin Fields like that draft pick look as good as possible by giving him more help. Uh, and then the Raiders, yeah, they did trade for Devontae, but like, oh, that would be hilarious. But they, they did trade for Devontae, but Hunter Renfro's been fumbling. He hasn't been doing doing much right now. And the Raiders are the kind of organization that make really, really weird decisions in free agency and the and the draft. So you never know. The Seahawks, they make weird decisions. Well, not anymore. Hey, we had a good draft. I'm only kidding with you, man. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. You know what I think is going to happen? Like, for sure. I don't exactly know what Sal's game plan is for the Broncos. I think they're going to keep running the ball. But the best thing that can happen against the Broncos is that they don't change their game plan to try and, like, acquiesce to, you know. you know. Well, the, best thing, the best thing that can happen is Elijah Moore is inactive and the Jets' yeah. offense rolls and they win. They win without him. But for you sure. know what? Next man up, you're you're out. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if they win running the ball or throwing the ball. Just like, keep winning. Yeah, it's like they've proven these past couple weeks that we can win without you and we will continue to win without you. Mm. And this Broncos win, you know, what it'll essentially do is that it'll, no. you know, it. I, I don't know what it'll do for his trade value, but it'll prove, okay, the Jets, I, you know, I, they have a little more leverage in getting rid of this guy because they are winning without him. He's not that integral to their team as he thinks he is. 
you know, so that's definitely there's a discrepancy in terms of the perceived value that Moore has of himself and that the Jets have of him, considering how well they're doing. His snap count the first three games averaged ninety percent. It was down to fifty eight percent this this past um, this past game against the but Packers. Also, they're also they're also running the ball shitload more. Do the yeah exactly conditions. yeah. Brees's carries went from like what forty percent offensive snaps to like what he went up to seventy. So he is getting more snaps than uh than yeah. Um, I mean, Warren. Sean, thanks for calling it, man. We appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, guys. Talking, man. You too, man. I I don't get how we've gone from like I don't know. Let's go like, to Jomo. We spent how many weeks? How, how many months yeah. praising this guy? He's, he's a part of the future. He's a part of the core. And it's like, all right, we're just we're just gonna win without him. Like, no, like we we, we need another compliment to. You're to either Carol with Wilson. us or you're without us. Oh, if you're without us, I'm winning without you. I mean, they have no choice. Unfortunately, they have no choice. Yeah. This sucks, I mean, man. he could kick rocks, but like, what what the hell is happening? Like. What the fuck? And and I mean, the previous caller was saying like he's not a pivotal part of the offense. Who's I mean, to yeah, but he he's still out there. Better say he's hi. still a starting wide receiver. Hey, Elmo, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite part of the show, starting, to be honest with you. <laughs> he's been a starting wide receiver six out of six games. I mean, I saw a stat. He's only five targets behind the leading the leading target. Uh, you know, whoever leads us in targets. Yeah. Um, it, dude, th- there was a play this season. He catches the ball and he's he's running sideways. Yeah. He lost I yardage. That. I mean, it's not like it's not like A, he isn't a part of the offense and B, he's not like a, a key part of the offense, but he's a guy that keeps defenses at bay. Like he's that vertical threat and to be able to run the ball as effectively as we have, that means that like you're you're not seeing eight man boxes, and there's a reason for that. It's because we have the receivers that stretch out the the defenses. But I mean, he's got to go. Elijah has got to go. I'm very, and I haven't really been thinking about this because we haven't. Nobody's talked about him. Nobody's <laughs> thought about him playing. Mims being as quiet as he has been. Yep. I mean it. That's, that's really a, a testament now. to, yeah. Uh, he should step right in in, in Moore's position, I think. But like, what the? Fuck I think Barrios happened? does. I don't think Mims does. Like everybody keeps thinking Mims gonna have a breakout game on Sunday. I think you're gonna see a lot more Barrios. You'll see a lot more to tight ends. I, I think we're all Jeff also Smith. jumping to conclusions way too soon. That like automatically Elijah Moore's just gonna get shipped out by next week. But I think like, but I think he's, they, he's, still, he's out. He's more likely out, than man. not yet inactive this week, yes. But after that, there's, there's a chance he still might be putting on the jet uniform playing again. He's what? never putting on a jet uniform again. Well, how could you okay. make him active next week against the Patriots, dude? This will all blow over if they no. wanted to. If blow they over. To. I'll blow him out of town. Dude, he had a bad day. He was frustrated. We talked it out. We're you. four if, if they're, if, the if, if they're not getting care? the value that they want, they're going to try to make it work. Yeah, make it work. He can be, he can be a practice squad guy. He can be. He can He's run the, the scout team. Work well. So he's we're not just gonna, playing we're, for we're the Jets. Ego. He's not like playing a scout team guy. All right, so we'll just go ego he, instead of using a talented player. We'll just say fuck you. You, you don't want to be here. I will right, we'll just put you on the on the scout team. Okay, that's, dude, that's a fucking. You can't have exactly. that in the locker room. Exactly. You can't. Garrett you can't. Wilson, you can't preach. Are, you can't preach culture and accountability guys, and keep playing them. Okay, but you guys don't think it's odd that now two receivers that at least what we see on film look like they have talent that don't want anything to do with this offense. That doesn't raise any red flags for you guys. It raises red flags, Mims. but the situation is what it is. So then, what do you want to do? You want to start? Fuck! You want to fire Sal tomorrow? You want to fire the floor? Find a way What's to make answer? it work. Find a way to make it work. You have a talented receiver. They obviously, had, obviously, they, they were going today. And he walked that out. should help your offense win. Find well, obviously, a way to make the plan—the plan they proposed him—he didn't like, so he wants out. Exactly. Then get out. What are you going to do? Cater to a second-year wide receiver who's done shit? <laughs> like, I mean, come he's on. Effectively. He, Dude, uh, listen, I, have, I, I understand that at, at this point, he's pretty much dug his own grave. Like, he's probably going to get traded at this point. Hard to come back from this. It just sucks all the way around because, it, I mean, clearly there's been communication yeah, going on for probably going back to last year, if at the very least, you know, for a few weeks. So, like, where where was the breakdown? Like, well, wherever not- it is, the damage is done now. It's done. Whatever happened, happened. It's done. And now it's a distraction. Now it's a problem. So you got to eliminate the problem. That's it. This team, if you're talking about culture and all this shit, and you're 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 united as one, trying to win games as a team, complimentary football, and you have this bullshit going on, damage is done. Got to go. It makes no Probably. sense, Probably. man. He's got to go. And and inactive. He never plays. He never plays it down for the Jets ever again. He's done. Never plays. Well, it I down. agree. Probably, but I'm not. I'm not, not going to completely write it off. There we go. 
Light goes out. That's, that a, real light jo- that's a real Jomo phone call. Perfect. Exactly. That's the same thing as Elijah's career with the Jets. Out. <laughs> Flashed out. <laughs> out. It's out. I can't believe we're here, dude. This it's is so sucks. wild, man. I can't believe it. Four and two. Like, all the positivity around this team. But he and was this one of the kids gonna fucking do this. Like, what? But the he was fuck? one of the guys that you genuinely bought into. Like, I, I'm just a sucker for it. Like, I, Dude, I just, I thought he was like a guy, like a long time jet his guy. His attitude, like, it, if he, if he had that attitude, but he also cared about the team more than himself. It that's a home run player right there. It's just funny to me. Like, we we loved this guy a week ago, and now, 24 hours later, like, based he on has to be traded. Ago, Dude, should we, should we thank him for that? that? He doesn't with, want to with, be with without the, without he, knowing he any details out. of what happened. Without knowing any yeah, details. Should of what I happened. thank him for that? Right, thank you, Elijah, for right, so asking we'll, out. We'll, we'll take the we'll take the team side without without knowing anything. That's fine. <laughs> no, listen. I think the Jets sort of blame here too. There's probably more to the story. And, and, and I and I've said repeatedly also. I think Elijah Moore fucked up a lot of this situation. But I think social at this media, point, doing this during a three game winning streak, everybody's at fault here. The damage. I just find it very odd that we all loved Elijah Moore a week ago, and now all of a sudden he. Dude, dude. There was a point we loved Jamal Adams too. We loved Sam Darnold too. Guess what? They had to go. Now Elijah Moore has to go. That's it. It's fucked up, man. I mean, <laughs> it's fucked up. I can't. I, it's, like, it's, it's, it's so team, shocking. I can't it's so it. unbelievable. When it's it like, first hit me, like I'm like, maybe they can mend it. Like maybe some of the veterans give him a call. Like this is something that the players got to get him back on board with the team. He like he he doesn't want to be a part of this team. Like fuck that. Get him the fuck out of here. That's what how I'm you, saying. How are you going to let a guy like that you. stay in the locker room? I understand. We miss. I agree. We misused him. What if players for six him? weeks? What if he's got support in the locker room? Then what? Dude, we're four and two. Those players want to win. They're, they're winning. They want to get paid Throw too. They want to get paid too, man. This whole thing is about Elijah Moore wanting to get paid, and he's looking at his stats for the first six weeks, and he's like, "Oh shit! If I keep playing like this, and if my if I'm projected to play like this with this fucking team forever, I'm not going to get that big payday." AJ Brown's chirping in his ear, bro. I, I mean, just this is just hypothetical, bro. You're gonna have stats like that. You ain't gonna get that twenty mil a year. But it's his he's second like, year, dude. Exactly. Like, but it's that's his second year. He's got oh. three more. Like you have three more full years to prove that you deserve a contract like that. And he's saying, "Fuck it." He's saying, "Fuck it." Well, fuck you. <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Jimbo, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. Thank you guys. I hope we all feel better tomorrow morning. Fuck this. Uh, I think I think we're gonna be more miserable tomorrow because because yep. tomorrow we're gonna be even angry because now it's a night of having the media to build up the story and have all their articles. Like I'm telling you, Samini hey, hey. Samini's beating off right now. He's so happy he's got negative shit to write about the Jets and all the and chaos. Then it just leads to a loss on Sunday. Forget it. Oh yeah, I mean this is just and one more quick thing, just a reminder. Tomorrow we'll be announcing uh, all our new gear: shirts, t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, t-shirts, and hoodies, and uh, part of our fundraiser. So. We're, we're we're primitive. We're so primitive, yet you keep watching, bro. I don't understand. If we're, if, we're, if we're below and beneath you, there's many other great channels you can watch. You're not forced to watch us. What's up, JT? All right, where'd he go? Darkness, like the Jets. We saw him. Where'd he go? Yo, JT. Fellas. Fellas. You need to. What's up, man? I want to just light. say, uh, you want light? Hold on. I'll make it happen. Give me one second. <laughs> It's a little dark. Just got a <laughs> ceiling fan. There you go. That better? Perfect. You're good. Better. All right. I want to thank you guys for the content first and foremost. I want to. Thank you for watching. I want to first say uh, Elijah Moore is uh, built shit soft. He's a mama's boy, so we need to go ahead and ship him on out of here. Uh, my problem with him is I I think that he saw the writing on the wall. He's like you know a little jealous of what Brees got going on. A little jealous, of, I, a lot of jealous of what Garrett's got going on, and I think he knows that uh, there's only so much money to go around. Uh, he's had problems with drops going back to the Carolina game last year. He's had he's had opportunities. He's got one splash play, and it's a it's a slant to the house. And I mean, yeah, but the, but but JT and I, I respect what you're saying, but the money conversation is not is not too much. It's like two your years from now, like you're years away from that conversation. Like he's not getting paid this year, not getting paid next year. But if he's got two years without any productivity, I mean, it's but how does he? Bro, but he's you know, he's one a, year. He's going to literally anticipate his stats based on six games this season. No, I mean, no doubt. I definitely he's, he's obviously jumped the gun and he's a little immature. We know that. But my thing is, um, look at all the guys we're going to have to pay. It's 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 clear that like there's no way we're going to be able to pay Zach, Elijah, Garrett, all these. You know what I mean? Like they it's can, dude. Down. The salary cap's going to go up. They can they can afford all these guys, dude. They're all like. 
it's gonna be timed differently. They get they could pay Quinnen. Like it's just man, I don't like, but what is what is your thought of like what they can get for oh first of all, do you make them active on Sunday? Absolutely not. Yeah, I agree. No, so then no, no, no so chance. What, what kind of compensation do you want from? What do you think like the I, I take I take what we what we uh use for him. I take a two. You know what I mean? I I, I think that uh he's a head he's a head case. I think the young guys we got right now, I, I mean, we're all Jeff fans. It's been tough. I'm born in the 90s, so I've seen a lot of shit. Uh, it's great to feel this this upbeat and positive and, and to see a culture really start to build. And I love watching your show, seeing how excited Jeff fans are. And for some shit like this to go down, it's just, come on, man. It's so we, frustrating, dude. Like, this literally, like, like, we've been so happy the last three weeks. Like, we're excited. We're looking about we're looking road trips, tailgates, all this shit. And it's like, dealing with this tonight is so fucking annoying, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like I'm literally angry. Like, like I, I come out of the gym. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, we can't have nice things. Like, why can't we be happy for a month? You know, it's like, yeah. And now you it's, know tomorrow's gonna be a shit storm. Like, the media's gonna be all over it. The press conference is gonna be a nightmare. Like, it's just the players are gonna have to deal with distractions. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I, I will say, Tyson. Uh, a lot of times you bring up Brits Mini. The guy drives me crazy. He has yep. for years. Um, can't put it on him. I think the kids are mature, and it's probably AJ Brown, his boy, in his ear a little bit. Cause yep. uh, think about it, he left this situation in Tennessee when he saw that that whole offense is built yep. around the run. We're kind of headed that way. And yeah, AJ uh, had the numbers at least. So AJ emerged. Like, like if, if Elijah emerges a star and had the huge numbers, all the productivity, like all right, but he didn't even like he's not even he's not even nothing yet. He's a a shell of what he could be. And I know we don't get the all twenty two watching on game day. But the couple times we tried to go down the field with him this year, he's not. He doesn't have much separation. You know what I mean? And, uh, balls. He doesn't come down on him either. Right, and and, and that's understandable. I, I think that uh, Lafleur, our offense should be built a little bit like New England's was in the old. We have so many weapons. Just get the ball in their hand. I, I don't understand why we can't use, you know, motions to get guys the ball quickly. You know, uh, yeah. it, it, to me, to me, it drives me crazy. We're so stagnant early in games because we just don't give guys a chance to just make a play. You know what I mean? It's crazy, but, man. I can't believe we're here right now. I just can't believe it. Yep. Well, let's see. Was that a truly, Kevin? What you got going on there, bro? <laughs> no, nah, Arizona iced tea. Okay. <laughs> That's always good. Got to stay hydrated. Yep. Hey, look, I, I appreciate like, you guys like to keep too long, but uh, hopefully I can make it back on another one of these shows. Keep doing what you're doing, guys, and hopefully we yeah, get up. Uh, I appreciate that. that no Have doubt. Have a great night, man. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Go to Jets Unleash. What's up, man? Hey, man. How are you guys doing tonight, man? Well, we've had better nights. I, dude, I'm just so upset with him, man. Like, out of all the time to do it, you know, I would expect us to be, like, in the off season, like, after year two or something, like, or just, like, lay, like, just doing the off season, you know? Not now when we're waiting, where we're trying to win games, we're trying to prep and all that. We don't need this. And now you're doing this now? It's all about him. Hey, Elmo, what? Hopefully, I can't even talk now. Um, hey, Elmo. But um, dude, I'm just frustrated, man. Dude, not only that, dude. Um, if you look at his, um, if you look at him a bit, dude, some of his routes, dude, he's he just um, he gives up half the routes. And the Steelers, in the Steelers, when we got the first picked on us, um, he stopped his route, which um, got that CB to be in his position. So to be honest, dude, it's a shocker. But you know what? We can't have this in the locker room. And I would not let this guy be on the field because he might sabotage us. You know, for all we know, he might well, try to do a, that. A, I don't think he's a sabotage. It's just a, a distraction, man. It's an unnecessary distraction. And then it's like, is he fully vested? Like, if he wants out, are you getting your best version of Elijah Moore on Sunday? You're probably not. What? You know what? You know what? I would get. I would trade him to the Broncos. Have Sauce one on one him. See how he likes it. <laughs> man, See how it, good he really is. It's wild that we're here right now. I can't believe it. I can't Not believe how I expected it. to be spending my Thursday night. I'm just I'm just curious Sorry. to see how long this actually drags out. Do they do they you know get with get rid of him within the next week or is it gonna last a couple weeks? He can't have him act this. He's basically just uh gonna last at least a few weeks. I think this is gonna be like the mid situation where if unless we get yeah. something, he's just gonna be on this roster and it's oh. gonna suck, but it, it is what it is. Like Joe, Joe Douglas ain't gonna give him out for free. He's gonna try to yeah. get him as something. He something. Something good for us. So, um, you know, this is again. This might be the time for Mims to shine. You know, we again. I don't know what's going in there, but uh, you know, we have all these players. We we got Garrett Wilson. We got Davis. We got Bayless. We got See, three, four good. 
I, I just, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know, dude. I just don't like. I get the whole Mims thing. I don't think you can get the opportunities everybody else thinks. I, I think it's going to be Barrios. It's going to be Uzama, Conklin, the running backs. Maybe Ruckert will see more action. Barrios is going to benefit the most because he's just going to feast on all those reps in the slot. I think. Yeah, I, I just don't think that it, maybe Mims could be maybe active now, but I don't think he's going to see a lot of. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe to be honest, actually think about it. Maybe this was um a little bit. Before when we um when Joe Douglas we signed Berrios, he probably was angry at that because that's probably was his position, and so seeing that and then seeing what Berrios yeah, has Bar been doing Berrios this season, is also special teams though. I mean, he had the same kind of role last year in the offense. Why? But he's more like um we saw um the touchdown like he does certain stuff like that. You think they would give it sweeps. to more? So, but it worked, though. you know. I mean, it worked last year at Barrios. Why not keep calling it? Yeah. They can't stop the guys. It's just, it's just wild, man. I, I don't, well, I don't get it. I don't understand it, and it's a mess now. It's a mess. Well, it's just a mess. Hopefully, it gets fixed. If not, we're gonna be hearing this all it's season. Be fixed when they trade him. What else are you gonna do? You can't, you can't appease him. Now the damage is done. The Jets are gonna say all the right things. Oh, yeah. We don't want to trade him. We want to keep him. You have to say that because you don't want to lose any leverage that you possibly have. You know what I mean? You want to oh, keep yeah. saying, "Hey, we want to keep him." That's... Well, as you know what the hint is. As soon as Sarah says, "Oh no, everything's good," you know he just wants to be competition. You know, yeah. as soon as he said that, we should have all been alarmed because every time yep. they say that, that Always. usually means it's going down this way. So, yep. Ah, uh, all right, guys, I'll let you guys get back to these calls. Thank you so much, have Jetta. A great night, man. Get to, <laughs> get to win Broncos. Let's go. Let's go. All right, prime time. I don't have a boycott. I, we can't do another call without without camera. We can't, we can't do that. That's rough. So uh, I guess what we'll do is we're going to uh, wrap this up. Thank you guys for joining us on our impromptu little uh, stream here. It's two hours, which is crazy. Don't forget, tomorrow we're launching new gear, man, So for a good fundraiser. So uh, we'll get all these out, eat details out. And then if something happens tomorrow with Elijah Moore prime time, we have to do a, a Friday night stream. I don't know if I can do another one of these. Talk to you guys tomorrow, see or whenever. See you guys later. And the Rangers lost tonight. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs>